Boy, my mic looks like it's picking up a lot of garbo. We'll see. Uh oh. Boy, my mic looks like it's picking up a lot of garbo. Uh -oh. We'll see. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Boy, my uh -oh. mic looks like it's picking up a lot of garbo. Uh -oh. can sing too i don't know why that's happening we're just gonna have to deal with it who cares what, like i'm editing what this it, into anything what's what's it doing nothing there's just a loud noise floor on my microphone hmm hmm like it's not that bad but it's there so hold on i have to deal with al before we begin or else he's gonna be up to no good brb He's making a pipe bomb right now. Oh, I know. Pipe bomb. I got news for you, motherfucker. Pipe bomb. Pipe bomb. Is it time for the racist clockwork? Only if Will is talking. <sighs> it's not fair. I'm a good noodle. I thought you were gonna say it's not funny. It was like, it kind it kind of is. <laughs> to be it, honest. It, it is funny, but it's like no. Of all the things <laughs> to be Midas of, that is the last <laughs> thing I want. Which whoever said that in chat, brilliant, very funny. Hey, I'm the King Midas of racism. <laughs> oh. uh. Whatever I touch turns to slur. <laughs> oh. uh, we we would like to see the game, please. Oh yeah. No. Good luck. <laughs> Suck a fart. This is to your detriment. <laughs> That's true. Uh, okay. I I guess I should do the thing where I'll wait until a character pops up on screen. Let us know if the sound balancing is noticeably off. OBS was acting weird. Uh, yeah. There's that old familiar feeling again. The crushing pressure of this historic courthouse. Actually, no, it's a little different today. There's an even more menacing tension in the air. It's me! Die! Ah, uh, so if you are mute, I don't know if that is on purpose or a whoopsie poopsie. Uh, Siv so went to deal with Al. Again? Ah! Again? I thought he came back. No. I am back now. Okay. There is some menacing tension in the air here today, isn't there? I suppose. Sorry, making the tweet. Ah, yes. Oh, for a while, Suzato. Okay. Well, since we've got the time, I'll let chat know. We've been making a joke of when it's Judge's birthday. But tomorrow, it's my birthday. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. What? Okay. Yes, people can have birthdays. No, sorry. More, <laughs> more OBS problems. Everything Will just said was bass boosted and just... <sighs> Pretty much. Happy birthday to me. What the fuck? <laughs> what is the problem? I specifically never update OBS because of this, and I didn't update it, and it's still like, eat shit, fucker, <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. All I've right. heard it's a, a part of like a German culture thing that you're not supposed to wish somebody, like a German person happy birthday before their birthday. It's like considered bad luck. So like you have to wait until like on the dot when the clock okay. turns over. I'm gonna, I think we should be a little more balanced now. We'll see. Yes, I think so. I'm a baby boy. <laughs> it can only be the result of the menacing appearance of the defendant. A little more courtesy, if you please. Oh, oh my, I, I do apologize. I'm sorry, I went over to adjust Will's volume and I remembered his icon. And just the comparison between the voice <laughs> and the Kirby is killing me. However, you are certainly not mistaken that this trial is far from ordinary. What do you mean? I'm not privy to the details. However, I understand that no jury has been selected. Oh. 
Well, a trial without a jury? Mm. Well, well, that's just like the trial of the professor ten years ago. A closed court. Hello! Hello, good I'm morning! Here, good morning! My, my dear fellows, good morning! Mr. Sholmes, we're getting echo from someone. Hey, oh, Danny, hold up. I don't know what's up with this. Have right, oh, you made note of my hair, Mr. Benahodo? An outright victory for science, you must agree. To be perfectly honest, so much happened yesterday that, well, I completely forgot about your little hair problem. Ha! What to one man is a... What to one man is a little hair problem is another day of drinking dubious potion after dubious potion. Bro, his kidney's supposed to be fucked. You have no idea how my stomach ails me this morning. I am shitting. Very brave. <laughs> Today my tummy hurts, but I'm being very brave. <laughs> very brave. Oh dear, how awful for you. I'm afraid you only have yourself to blame, Mr. Sholmes. I hate you. And good morning to you, Mr. Reaper. I'm delighted to see you looking so full of vim. And I, you, a see London celebrated great detective, is as active as ever. Oh, you exaggerate, my dear fellow. Compared to my paltry engagements with a few trivial cases, the Reaper's overbearing presence is far greater deterrent to the black roots of crime in our capital. Man, I sure bought an Ethernet cord finally this week after moving my other one into my booth, and <clears throat> immediately the latency time between, like, I, I can tell you guys are seeing it way faster. It's, <laughs> it's like half a second less between each line. It's so nice. Yay. And whilst I may not agree with your methods, there is at least one point on which I would readily commend you. What in honor and that would be? Good kisser. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... Stop eating that hoagie and... <laughs> It really just sounds like you're going to town on a burger. <laughs> Delicious. Your, your eye for a good lawyer, sir. Mm, this is a British burger, so it's just peas. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's peas with a uh, soggy baguette and as well as chimney dust. <laughs> <laughs> Harvested from the finest stacks of southern London. It's no we, uh, sleeper. We have a we have a burger at my work with fried beans on it. Ooh. Ooh, I don't like that. I thought you were gonna say we uh we have a birthday in chat today. <laughs> 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 like we were gonna sing like your TGI Fridays. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Mr. Sholmes. After all, behind this lawyer, there is a very great mind. My own. You are insufferable. What are you trying to say? I wish only to say that you should be prepared for quite a trial, Mr. Reaper. Oh. Sholmes being the final boss would be the best way this game could end. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to barge oh. in. Oh. Gina. What's that on her arm? It's a mourning band, I suppose. Father, shouldn't you be at the symposium? They're all dead. It's been postponed. <laughs> so I have some free time. <laughs> They're all dead, and we have no one to investigate their bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to come along with the police inspector to see our country's up-and-coming student in action. I shall be very interested to see the fruits of your studies over the past year. Well, uh, it's an honor to have you here. Let's hope there are some fruits to see. Uh, I think Me? there will be a few in the courtroom. Yeah. Me? Odo? Oh, yes, Gina? Why do you agree to this, sir? Why do you take them on? This... This Reaper bloke. Everyone says it was him what killed the boss. I'm sorry, Gina, but I just don't believe that. Well, if it weren't him, then who was it? Well, I'm a lawyer, and it's my job to prove people innocent, and you're a police officer, so it's your job to figure out who did it. But I'm sad. 
I don't know that. Yet. I don't care who calls him what. The Reaper's just a name. He's just a person at the end of the day. And if it turns out it was him who killed the boss, then God help him. Mm. Fiery eyes indeed. Yes, the culprit deserves every ounce of your loathing. Something about this expression from this angle looks a little wonky. Am I wrong? <laughs> uh, well, she made some at noise. Least, at least that may be some solace to the deceased. Please, Odo. Get whoever did this for the boss. Oh, Dina. I ain't feeling this useless, but there's nothing I can do. You could go <laughs> investigate. So you gotta find who done this and make the wretched and make the wretch pay. Counsel for the defence and the defendant. Court will be in session <laughs> shortly. Make your way into the courtroom at once, please. Why well, was I an afterthought? All right then. I was the defendant. Here we go. And the defendant can come too. Do I have to? Yes. Smack. It's time, Mr. Naruhodo. Lord Van Zeeks. Why did you slap my ass? Go get him! Go <laughs> go get him, tiger! Yeah. <laughs> One who lost his treasured brother. What a weird phrase to a mess. Well, when, when you say it like that. What an aggressively translated from Japanese phrase, mm -hmm. treasured brother. <laughs> it's... Literally beloved would have worked there. <laughs> My, he's my treasured brother, Clint, to a mass Worth murderer. Worth about 350. One who lost his treasured father in a foreign court of law. Gina is there too. <laughs> all that misfortune, all that pain, on course to collide headlong in this trial. It's time to shine a light on all these dark events. And whatever truth is revealed, we're going to have to look it straight in the eye. I was thinking, like, I mostly like Narahodo, but he is the most aggressively, like, I could pour soup in your lap and I'd pro like, you could pour soup in my lap and I'd probably apologize to you, character in the whole mm -hmm. franchise. Like, it's insane what you can say or do in front of him and not have him react. I mean, the dude was sympathetic to racist backstory, so yeah. Yeah, that, that, and I, I'm still not over him just being like, Kazuma, well, we'll catch up later. <laughs> it's like, yeah. what are you- Whatever. See you later, I guess. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. We are here to conduct the fair and just trial of the defendant, Baruch von Zeeks. Counsels for the defense and prosecution, are you ready to begin? The defense is ready, my lord. The prosecution is more than ready. Pasama-sama. It's honestly very weird having that voice coming out of the the stand, even though <laughs> even though they're both will. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's different energy. I've been, I mean, whoop! I've been wishing to see you in court again for so long. It feels, but I never pictured it happening like this. I never thought I'd be facing you behind the prosecution's bench. So-called Reaper of the Bailey has been a scourge like no other, undermining Her Majesty's justice system. Today, we must uncover the truth behind this scourge. In other words, this trial is going to be a lot more far-reaching than Inspector Gregson's murder. The truth revealed by these proceedings may have unprecedentable repercussions through the judiciary. Reading off his hands. <laughs> <laughs> Accordingly, they are to be conducted as a closed trial with no members of the public present by Her Majesty's direct orders. How will that work, my lord? It won't. <clears throat> the burden of all attribution, attribution, attribution. Ar arbitration. 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 Thank you. 
and adjudication falls on my shoulders. Just uh, the be- albatross becomes very southern for the burden of all arbitration. <laughs> Come. Arbitration. Yeah. Therefore, as you will see, the Joe's bench shall remain vacant today. Would have killed for Sholmes to be sitting in one of the seats. Just He's like, just don't mind me. Down. If no members of the public are present, m- might I ask who is currently occupying the gallery, my lord? They are members of the judiciary here to witness proceedings and ensure an equitable trial. Okay. Members of the judiciary. Oh my, this is a very unusual trial already. There is, of course, another unprecedented aspect to these proceedings on which I must elaborate. The counsels for the prosecution and the defense are both aliens of Great Britain. Well, how did you find out? <laughs> yeah, little, little horns. Her antenna pop out of their heads. What? Well, as someone voiced by Will, I believe we have no right to be here, my lord. <laughs> I believe it takes an outsider to see the truth sometimes. And as I stand here in this courtroom now, I'm quite certain. This is the reason why I had to come to Britain. Also, remember, guys, if any if anything racist pops up in Will's dialogue, we all have to read it as fast as... We have to save for work, Sasuke, and out of the way. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's not fair. Cosima. It really isn't. Very well. Let us commence proceedings. Prosecutor Asugi, your opening statement, if you please. Certainly, my lord. The incident took place on 1st November. That's weird. Oh, that's right. They're British. Uh, at just after 5 o'clock in the afternoon. The location was a building of flats on Fresno Street on the outskirts of the city. The victim's body was discovered there in an old single-room rental property. Yes, Inspector Tobias Gregson. A name known very well indeed to this court. Not least for his miraculous resolution of one of this country's grimmest cases ten years ago. The Professor case. How sure are you about the time of the incident? Several witnesses on the street outside heard the gunshot, and all have reported the same time. Yes, that's what Gina told us too. There were a number of witnesses. I have here a plan of the room. The victim was found curled up in one corner. It's believed that he was shot from the front of the front at point-blank range and died instantly. Mm. How has the range been determined? There were scorch marks around the entry wound. God, I hate scorch marks in these games. Mm. Such marks are caused by the gunpowder used to fire the bullet. But powder hot enough to leave scorch marks is only ejected a few inches beyond the end of the barrel. In other words, it only happens when the target is at point-blank range. I see, yes. Thank you for the detailed explanation, Counsel. Okay, let's take a look at that real quick. The murder weapon was found... Oh. Oh. Gregson. British. Time of death. Just time of death. That's the word. What? Why is it not on here? I guess maybe it hasn't been... Maria Gori. It's the core. Gori. Victim was shot in the chest at close range from the front, resulting in instant death. Scorch marks at point of entry. Bullet exited the body from behind. The caliber of the gun used matches that of standard issue f- uh, firearms for members of the judiciary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. The murder weapon was found lying beside the victim. And you have managed to ascertain the owner of this firearm? No, my lord. Not conclusively. Bravo, Kazumathan, for not trying to use the gun as evidence when its prominence can't be proven. Furthermore, my lord, as I've explained, the revolver was fired at extremely close range. The bullet passed through the victim and struck the wall behind him. There was a candelabrum mounted on that wall, and the tip of one of the candles in it was found to have been blown off by the projectile. We noticed that too, didn't we? Kazuma. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> Thank you for the thorough report, Counsel. The setting of the crime is clear to me. You will submit to the plan of the crime scene as evidence, please. No, it's mine. As you wish, my lord. <laughs> Candy Zebra? Shut up, chat. <gasps> oh. 
Is this Fresno Street room Inspector Gregson's private abode? No, my lord. The room is rented to a Mr. Hugh Boone. But there is precious little furniture inside, and it is generally in a poor state of repair. So what on earth was Gregson even doing there? Presumably he was investigating some case or another. When a policeman was informed of the gunshot from the witnesses and rushed to the scene, he found only the deceased inspector and the accused standing alongside, al alongside holding the gun. The attending officer arrested the accused in the spot. So, the details of the case are clear. In that case, the prosecution would like to call its first witness. A name, please, counsel. Naturally, the accused himself. Lord Van Zeeks? Why are you surprised? As a prosecutor, he believes in the oath of office he's taken and will be compelled to tell the truth. I killed him. Very well. Let the, Let the defendant take the witness stand. Baruch Von Zeeks chooses death. <clears throat> <laughs> so, witness, state your name and occupation for the court. Baruch Van Zeeks, Old Bailey Prosecutor. I presume, Lord Van Zeeks, that you heard Prosecutor Asuki's opening priest I didn't see what that I word did. was either. Pressies? Presses. Presses, yeah. Hmm. I did. It is alleged that you were found at the scene of the crime, and that you were arrested by the arriving police officer. Can you confirm this? Yes, my lord. Then I'm sure the court would like to hear you explain some things away. Namely, why you were there in the room on Fresno Street at the time in question, and what exactly took place. I intend to explain away nothing. I will simply tell the truth. I'll say, Lord Van Zeeks, I never imagined this day would come. Or rather, I didn't want to imagine it would come. But since you became known as the Reaper, a part of me had been dreading it. All right, keep your opinions out of it, Judge. Your formal testimony then, witness. Judgey. I was investigating Gregson, and my inquiries had led me to that address. When I first entered the room that day, it was dark inside and I saw no one. A moment later, I heard the gunshot. I spun around and saw the revolver on the floor. Just as I picked the firearm up to examine it, the door flew open and I heard a man scream. It was only then that the body of Inspector Gregson appeared before me. That testimony was the whole truth? Yeah, it was. So, you heard a shot being fired in a room with no living occupants, and moments later a corpse somehow appeared before your eyes. Is that it? That does sound pretty sus, to be <laughs> honest. You're right, you haven't explained away anything. In fact, that would barely qualify as an excuse. I thought you were my mute apprentice. Yet it turns out you have a way with words, Prosecutor Osagi. Hmm. It would appear to be a singular tale indeed. Singular isn't the word. It's laughable. What's gotten into Kazuma? He's not behaving like himself at all. Haven't you realized it's me? Herlock Holmes! <laughs> Master of Disguise! Very well then. I like this comment in chat. Worst testimony ever. Heart. <laughs> <laughs> Counsel, you may begin your cross examination. Yes, my lord. I'll you be right back. I'm gonna get some water. Yam, can you fill up my job. water bottle too, please? I guess. Thank you. Okay. When I first oh. I was investigating gr <laughs> When I when I when I you were investigating <laughs> the inspector. <laughs> what on earth for? I'm not at liberty to say. You should say. Sorry? I'd identified a distinct possibility that Gregson was involved in the case I was investigating. Ooh. Regrettably, though, he was killed before I could secure the proof I needed. Is the court to understand? Well, I will be the old man. <laughs> Is the court to understand, then, that on the day in question you followed the victim to the scene? No. 
I was privy to his movements in advance. How? Tracker. I stole into his office in the yard and consulted his diary. I keep one of my bats behind everyone I'm suspicious of. <laughs> Looks over his shoulder. Ha! The address on Fresno Street was noted in the 5 p.m. entry. You illegally entered the man's office. In Japan, that alone would constitute a very serious offense. As it does in Great Britain, I assure you. Is that not the case, Lord Van Zeeks? I was aware of the possible consequences. So, in summary, you were investigating the victim, and yet you refused to tell the court why. I didn't realize British prosecutors enjoyed such freedom to choose what to divulge under oath. Uh, why did I ever think I could defend this man? Uh, yes, huh? I give up! <laughs> Wait, Norohodo, please. Come big. I don't, I don't say, Norohodo, please. Kumbaya, Norohodo. <laughs> Kumbaya, my guy. Kumbaya, my guy. Kumbaya, my guy. Kumbaya. Have you ever been to the address before? Welcome back. No, never. I only learned of the place as a result of my investigations into Gregson's activities. There was no light inside when I entered, so it was all but impossible to make out anything, or with anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but at 5pm the sun would have only just gone down. It would have still been reasonably light outside. Hmm. The room has a window, but it was boarded shut and my eyes were closed. Oh, very, little, <laughs> very little light found its way into the room from outside. So it was extremely murky inside. I wouldn't have noticed if the victim was already lying on the floor. There was no artificial light in the room, you say? You're quite sure? I'm quite sure that part of the room where the body was found was very dark. I have a feeling there was a small oil lamp burning on the desk, though. I couldn't say for certain. Look, Mr. Naruhodo. I drew a picture. Do you think Naruhodo has big Espeon energy? I like Espeon more, to be honest. Yes. <laughs> there is a small desk in the room just here. Yes, I remember. And there was an oil lamp on it, as well as the framed photograph. When I entered the room, I closed the door behind me and started towards the desk to investigate. And what did you find? Nothing. I never actually reached the desk. Okay. A moment later, I heard the gunshot. So, who fired the gun? I have no idea. I didn't see anybody else in the room. But you say it was very dark in there? Yes, that's right. All I can tell you is, I didn't sense another's presence. Aha! Uh -huh. uh, then it could be that the gunshot actually originated for some from somewhere outside the room? No. No, that's out of the question. Oh! Without doubt, the sound emanated from inside the room. I could smell the gunpowder. Oh, this is going from bad to worse. What if Gregson shot himself by accident because he was scared of Van Zeke's coming in the room? That's a hell of a fuck up. I, if that, if he shot himself, I'd be shocked if it were by accident. <laughs> and you say that's the point at which you notice the revolver on the floor? Yeah. Correct. And I foolishly picked it up. That was careless on my part. Presumably yeah. then. I know I'm eating noodles! Presumably then. The gunshot you heard came from the firearm that you somewhat hastily took in your hands. In point of fact, my lord, I believe it did not. What? The barrel of the revolver I picked up was cold, and there was no smell of spent powder. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but then where on earth was the gun that was fired the gun um i don't know whilst i would like to oblige you with the details i'm afraid i can't i too would dearly like to know that so it's an agreement we would all like to know that innocent <laughs> <laughs> well if i don't <laughs> a man you say i'm interested in those one of the witnesses i presume <laughs> That's right, I'm a man. One of the street merchants working on the Fresno Street. You're on thin, sexy ice, you. 
Uh oh. I hope it doesn't break. I what hope are, it what are, flip. What are you two doing? <laughs> Who are these merchants? <laughs> Enough of this silliness in my court of law. <clears throat> a number of them had set up their stalls directly beneath the boarded window of the crime scene. A match seller, a newsmonger, oh and a peddler. Oh my They've God. all given statements saying they heard the gunshot. And without, th and without thought of danger, they ran inside to see what had happened. Do they all have red hair? Yes, Gina told us about that yesterday, didn't she? They burst through the door with the same force, it would seem. They did, and almost gave me a heart attack in the process. It's a good Scare. thing. It's a good thing my heart no longer beats. But you're supposed to be the Reaper. The first man to come in immediately noticed the revolver in my hand and fled. Wouldn't you give anything for it to just be John Lennon, John Lennon, and John Lemon again? Like, they just... <laughs> <laughs> A policeman patrolling on Fresno Street heard the commotion and was able to arrest the accused shortly after the incident occurred. Anyway, the man's scream drew my attention in the direction. It's better, better than John Lennon. <laughs> John Lennon. John um, Lennon. What do, you, what do you mean by that? In what way did the body appear? I honestly can't explain it, but it's the truth. We deal with some trapdoors here, guys. As far as I was concerned, the body hadn't been there until that point, and then suddenly. There it was. Oh my god, is it a ceiling door? Is I, it in the fucking ceiling? I just got reminded of, um, in, when I was in high school, I was in this play called The Foreigner, and at one point, the bad guys are the clan, and at one point, they're very superstitious, so one of the good guys is dressed up as a clan member and stands in front of a pre-established in-universe trap door, and they, like, nail the sides of his robe to the sides and then have him descend through the floor so it looks like he's being melted by something <sighs> and the the rest of the clansmen run away and that that's how they resolve it and the fucking a friend of mine named Sophia who liked that show is like oh yeah you guys did a great job and months later I was talking to her and I was like, oh, yeah, like, have you never been under the stage? And she's like, I didn't know there was an under the stage. I was like, yeah, I mean, what about the, the, the trap door we used in The Foreigner? She goes, there was a trap door in The Foreigner? I'm like, how do you think we made that guy disappear? Do you think we really did that? And she was just like, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. So for like a year, anything that when she was just like, I don't know how that works. She'd be like, man, there was a trap door in the floor. Oh, me. <laughs> Bully. She deserved it. <laughs> mean. Did you perhaps hear the sound of the victim falling to the ground just beforehand? At that moment, what I heard was the sound of the door flying open and the scream of the man who came inside first. Nothing more. I see. After the man fled, I examined the body. I was stunned to find that it was Gregson. Most curious circumstances indeed. How the inspector was killed, or how his body seemed to appear out of nowhere, I have no idea. Huh? Oh, it's you. Surely the court has heard enough. What? My lord, the cross-examination has clearly revealed that the accused Beric Van Zeeks is lying on multiple fronts. Ooh, this is a new theme. I'm gonna turn it up. What, what is that supposed to mean? Gracious counsel! <laughs> the defendant is lying, you say? Oh, that's still you, it's fine. <laughs> In his testimony just now, he claims that he failed to notice the victim's body because the room was dark. That's correct. No, that's impossible. You're a vampire. As proven by this candelabrum. How does that prove anything? If you examine the tips of the long if you examine the tip of the long candle, you can see it had been blown off by a powerful impact. One would assume that the projectile from the firearm passed through the victim and struck the candle. The problem comes when you consider the other two candles, which are clearly of a different length. I mean, 
You could have just lit and t lit two of them. Yes, I can see that only the candle that appears to have been struck by the bullet is long. We could reasonably expect someone to have lit all three candles together. Which begs the question of why only one has ended longer than the others. That must be because that particular candle was extinguished while the others were still burning. Oh, fuck. That's right. When the candle was hit by the bullet, it obviously went out. But the other two candles would have still been burning. So the fact is... The victim's body would have been illuminated by the light still thrown by the candelabrum. And the accused claim that he couldn't see the body clearly contradicts the facts. I don't know, man. It's just, you can just have Dude, an onion. it's literally just the angle of the door. When he walked in, he couldn't see the body, or he couldn't see anybody there because the door opens in that direction. And it blocks and, the light. <laughs> yeah. And now to the next lie. There's more! More! The accused also claims never to have visited the scene of the crime before. That's the truth. In that almost empty room, the police discovered something very unusual. This scroll? <laughs> A board covered from top to bottom in police documents and newspaper cuttings. Yes, that's right. We did see it too. It goes without saying that the contents of the police documents cannot be divulged. However, they included a number of reports from various historical cases. The oldest of which was from 10 years ago. 10 years ago? That's starting to sound familiar! Oh boy! And there is a common link, or there is a common thread linking all of the documents on that board. Indeed. What is the common thread, Council? This thread, it's red and it's pinned to some of them. Hmm. They all relate to cases prosecuted in court by Barrack Van Zeeks. All of God, them? God, what a shit-eating grin. Mm. And furthermore, all those cases are ones in which the defendant was acquitted. A good lord! Interestingly, none of those defendants are alive today, because all of them have been sent to their graves by the Reaper. Ah! Oh, no. In short, that dingy little room. A dingy room. Dingy room. It was very silly in there before the body showed up. Is the Reaper's secret hideout and his base of operations. What? The Reaper's hideout? Yeah, this is uh, kind of a leap in logic, my guy. Yeah. And yet the Reaper would claim never have to been, never have to been, he wasn't there. Okay, <laughs> gang? No one would believe that. No, I would. The truth is. Well, I, hmm, now that I think about it, huh. <laughs> Innocent. <laughs> We've been looking at this backwards. Words. Explain, counsel. Inspector Gregson was investigating the identity of the Reaper. When he discovered the location of the man's secret hideout, he was killed. Why would he keep uh, a board of existing photos of people who died like years and years ago and nothing else for a hideout? Yeah, this, this, this is a setup. As I'm sure everyone can imagine, by the Reaper's hand. What? What? Hey, uh, Kazuma Sama, this is kind of stupid. Um, did you hit your head really, really hard? I did. <laughs> oh, <order. laughs> order. Very well. I hereby state the current opinion of the court. Baruch von Zeeks is an outstanding prosecutor who has rendered great service to his country. However. It is with deep regret that I must concur with Prosecutor Asuki's contention. That the defendant's testimony exhibits a number of stark inconsistencies with the known facts. Like I, I don't know, my lord, he's acting kind of moonish. <laughs> like a little bit That's, moon. It's pretty moon. <laughs> pretty moon. I, it's pretty moon. <laughs> That's pretty moon. It's pretty quag. I it's funny to me because like it's such a bad testimony on its own. Like, Kazuma could just be like, what do you mean? He walked in was like, I didn't see the body. I just happened to pick up the gun. Like, you could just be like, he's lying. It's... I... Also, like, I know this is not the bigger point of contention, but as a candle addict, not for eating, for using them, I... Oh. I Why do you because, I feel the need to... Because someone in chat or honestly one of you would have made the joke. That's why. Moon. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> um, so, 
Uh, I I have sets of candles where I will just light one or two yeah. randomly. That's yeah. it's not that weird. <laughs> Yeah, sure, Jello. Yeah, yeah, unless they're gonna come at us with the fucking yeah, yo, Victorian logic of we needs to have all free lit because we goes through candles so quick. Yeah. We don't got things like electric light bulbs. All I have done is state the truth as I know it. Kazuma's done a brilliant job as ever. He's drawing on his experience as a defense attorney to build build his prosecution's case, and it's formidable. Counsel. You will submit the board that you just showed the court as evidence. I believe it to be fundamental in establishing the facts surrounding the Reaper's existence. Here comes the board. Hello, board. Me when a case has sucked for the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my lord. Yo, I love I love that someone in chat, okay, gay boy, got denied. <laughs> love that gay is not blocked, but gay boy! <laughs> gay boy! <laughs> and now, the prosecution would like to call new witnesses to the stand. Oh, boy. <laughs> Wit witnesses who saw events unfold on the day in question. Oh, it's the witness, Alucard. He is here. They were mentioned in the previous testimony, too, if you remember. Yes, the street sellers who heard the gunshot. It was like a minute ago, I remember. Hello, guys. Oh, the witness is in. <laughs> Judge. The, defend the defendants may step down from the witness stand. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Certainly, my lord. Jello, you are going to be so happy, am I? Oh, I am! <laughs> oh my god! Yes! 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 Oh, it got better! <laughs> so, witnesses, state your names. Oh, 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 no. Well, I already have mine of these three, and Will's already playing the prosecutor, so Yam and Siv, pick your poison. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, 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 uh. I, this guy has an accent. I feel like you gotta take it, Yeah, Siv. I gotta take this one. Names, and then his names, far too fancy for the likes of us. We're just free and easy. See, sell what we like. We live where we want to live. I give them all vacant stairs as they walk down Fresno and spin a few words into a verse for them. Beppo! Ah. I have missed <laughs> Beppo! Ah. Would I be right in assuming that all three of you make your living by selling wares on the street? <laughs> Everyone calls me Gothip. I sell jaunty little tidbits to passers by, you know. Jaunty little tidbits. <laughs> Got an absolute tidbit? smasher for you, sir. Right up your ginnelly ease. My uh, my what? <laughs> Sixpence is the price, and not a penny less. Wait, you, you're actually trying to sell it to me now? <laughs> oh, come on, sir. Don't tell me you're not interested. Try the man. <laughs> Give him the money and see what it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Sixpence it is. You won't regret it, sir. Now, got your listening ears on? Just between us, a young couple on Slate Street if just had twins. Is that it? No, it's not it. It's gossip, isn't it? It wants to spread, but that bit's up to you and your mouth, of course. I've got more, you know. You want another juicy one? Six pence a piece it is, if you're curious. I know everything that happens on the outskirts of New Vegas. You can- Yeah, basically. God, I... this guy's got a fucking, like, rope mark around his neck. Did you guys notice that? Uh-oh. <laughs> I am curious, yes, about what's going about what's going on just under that fat bottom lip of yours. Oh yeah, he does. Namely, that unusual bruise or whatever it is that's poking out from under your collar. The bruises on his AS. Oh, shut up. What about the next witness then? What name do you go by, and what do you sell? Hi. <laughs> oh, me. oh my God. I'm Venus. That's what everyone calls me. Funny, isn't it? <gasps> Is she a fireworks sale? Oh my oh. god! Who's <laughs> who's pandering to me? Who's giving them? <laughs> who's slipping these designers a twenty? 
<laughs> I sell these lovely little fireworks to all the local school kids. <laughs> the great <laughs> of 1888 was my fault. Sixpence a pop, what do you say? This is the funniest take on the little match girl I've ever seen. <laughs> You weren't exaggerating with little. Do they actually sell? Oh, yeah. The second years can't get enough of my Venus firecrackers. Especially when I tell them that if they get a hundred, they can blow up the school. <laughs> 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 Not the most savory of ideas, young lady. What do you say then, eh? Want to part with six pence for a pop? Wait, what? You want me to buy one? <laughs> Tell you what, I'll let you in on a little secret. If you get a hundred of them, you could blow up the whole courtroom. <laughs> Try the woman. Give her the money and see if she's right. Pay <laughs> the woman counsel. I love this bit. <laughs> Very oh, funny. Bit. All right, all right, I'll buy one. <laughs> Lovely stuff, right then. This is something a bit extra just for you. The Venus special, only 600 pence. S 600? It's a hundred of my regular fireworks. Nothing little, little about that, is there? And there'd be nothing little about the punishment if I blew up the old Bailey either. Yeah, that was <laughs> definitely fake gunshot sound. So that sound. was the gunshot. Yeah, yeah. this is actually the gunshot, yeah. And the last witness. What name do you go by and what do you sell? A bad boy. A bad boy. Okay, hang on. Let me... I, I should look at the new pieces of evidence. Oh god, all right. So many. There are details of a whole raft of cases dating back years on year, aren't there? This paper from ten years ago is browning with age, look. Out of interest, the most recent thing appears to be this newspaper cutting year. Oh, it's the same red-headed league advertisement that Mr. Sholmes picked out. And do you remember there was a red hair piece at the scene too? Was Inspector Gregston an ex- Exponent? I don't know. Exponent. Exponent. An exponent of the Red-Headed League, then. I actually don't know what that means. Blood. <gasps> oh. This is so comically noticeable. <laughs> oh, what's this? Mr. Narodo, look! Oh, yes. It's a smudge of some kind. In fact, TikTok, it looks just like a hand... What did, what did we call these? <laughs> Uh, I think uh, we stuck with handprint because we knew the alternative. It's a handprint. Oh, come on. It's a and handy. <laughs> That's bloody, isn't it? Oh dear, how disturbing. There's a bloody Skinnies? on the back. Skinnies, Skinnies were skin prints. Yeah. Or, um, I guess yeah. that's a bloody then. And the, yeah, no, it's, it, is she's for mi she's stains. missing a firework. That's a blood stain, Siv. You don't it could be tomato sauce. <laughs> Sorry, Have tomato sauce. <laughs> sauce, thank you. Have you had an idea, Mr. Narodo? You're staring at the end of the string of fireworks. Eat like spaghetti. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's just that it's the Venus special. I was wondering what six hundred pence worth of fireworks would sound like. Shall we find out? What? B but she said it could blow up the courtroom. <coughs> All right. That was a fairly sizable bang. Oh, my ears are still ringing, Mr. Narodo. It sounded almost exactly like... the details of the firecracker. <laughs> okay. Beppo. Oh, uh, Beppo. I'm a thinker, me. I think all sorts of thoughts. I think, therefore I am. Therefore I think, I think. Because I stand there on the street, watching the world go on without me. They call me the Observator. Get out of here, old man. Everyone calls you Sandwich, and you know it. <laughs> so, you don't actually sell anything? A I am homeless. <laughs> a problem shared is a problem halved, as they say. I give advice, I do, and think what it means. Hot Beppo. <laughs> I don't actually sell anything. No, come to think of it. Pity. No more purchases today, please. Well, we have quite a cast here, it seems. 
They conduct their business on Fresno <laughs> Street from morning until night, my lord. And always in the same place, directly adjacent to the crime scene. I see. Unless they heard the gunshot, I suppose. Not only that, but they were but they very uh, but they very bravely ran inside to see what was going on and witnessed the crime. Can you imagine just the girl outright lighting a firework, bang, there was a gunshot! Let's go inside! And then they just steal a bunch of shit and run away. They just start <laughs> squatting. Well, I'll be bigger than I thought just between us. Venus de Milo, what am I to do? What a terrible thing I saw. What I think is, if all what we see is light and shadow playing with our eyes, is any of it real? <laughs> oh, fuck, Beppo, oh, what he's happened? Oh, lost it. Beppo's lost. Very well. The court will hear the formal testimony of these three witnesses now. You will describe in detail what you witnessed and heard at the time of the incident. Hypocrite that you are, you trust the chemicals in your brain to tell you that they are chemicals. Will you fight or will you die like a dog? We saw the whole thing from start to finish. We did everything from the moment they went in the building. It was less than a minute after the river had gone inside that we heard a big bang. It seems to me that quick to talk is quick to walk. Gossip couldn't wait to go and see what had happened. I ran into the room and there he was, the reaper, gun and hand standing over the dead body. It was scared after death, me, so I ran off to find a copper. If these witnesses were there the whole day and saw everything, who did they see going inside the building? Only the victim, Inspector Gregson, and the accused, Barrack Van Zeeks. You guys... I've seen pictures of that reaper in the paper. I know what he looks like. I hate to say this. I think there's a good chance there's a trap door in the fireplace. Mm -hmm. Oh, just between boy. us. Folks love stories like this. I've made myself a tidy sum already. But wait. The room was just one of several flats in the building. Someone from another flat could have done it. No. All those flats on Fresno Street are unoccupied. Which means they're occupied by squatters. Of course they are. The small, damp, dirty, and expensive to boot. The room in which the inspector was found is the only property in the building that's currently leased. And we know the leaseholder's name, don't we? It's Hugh Boone. Hmm. The testimony the court has just heard would appear to leave little room for doubt. It's becoming increasingly difficult to see how anyone other than defend under blah, 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 blah. No! You know him! You did it! Thank <laughs> you for your candor, my lord. <laughs> how how very glib! <laughs> <laughs> Counsel for the defense, you may proceed to cross-examine the witnesses. Yes, my lord. Such cross-examination. This was not my intention. <laughs> In a close court uh. like this without a jury, the judge is the only person whose opinion who matters. I have to break down this testimony. Somehow. <clears throat> okay. Press. Oh. When you say they, who do you mean exactly? I'm sorry, what are your pronouns? Inspector Gregson and the defendant, Lord Van Zeeks. I suppose so. The likes of us don't know the names of the high and mighty. But I'll tell you one thing. It was the old reaper that went in last. That's for sure and certain. Just behind Inspector Gregson. Did they arrive at the same time as each other? No, no, not at all. <sighs> the first fellow must have got inside a good 15 minutes before we heard that gunshot. The victim arrived 15 minutes before. Are you sure about that? Am I sure? Am I sure? Does it seem likely that I've forgotten a fella with bright red hair like that, does it? Yes, it really well red, weren't it? Better than my flaming fireworks, even. That, that fiery red mop still burnt on the insides of my eyelids, it is. You need to help, Bebo. Wait a minute. <laughs> You're saying the man was a redhead? Are you listening, chum? Oh, he was a redhead, and he had a big trunk with him as well. 
This guy feels like a Skyward Sword NPC. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but Inspector Gregson's hair isn't red, not by any stretch of the imagination. It seems likely the the. I guess it's fair they would want to lead, even though they clearly know what's up. They are defense lawyers. <laughs> It seems likely that the person you saw wasn't, in fact, Inspector Gregson at all, but some other third party. No. Oh, sorry. No, I had to break it to you, but the witnesses are correct. What?! Just have a look at this photograph of the victim taken at the scene. Look at this <laughs> photograph. So, someone, I'm telling you, Jason Griffith Usopp. Honestly, my first thought as well, but I'm already playing two people. As much as I'd love to be Jason Griffith Usopp for two hours. Yeah, try doing that with a British accent. Hello, governor! <laughs> oh, Jesus. It sounds like you're torturing a parrot. <laughs> you, you are some fucking Walmart brand muppet. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Oh, honey, that's Aww, not your he's color. he's Irish. <laughs> Aww. Aww, she's Irish. <laughs> yes, that's that's Inspector Gregson, all right. When your friends get a picture of you passed out drunk at the end of the con. <laughs> <laughs> and a red hairpiece. Ah! <laughs> of course, we saw one on the floor when, the investiga when we investigated the scene, didn't we? I still refuse to believe Inspector Gregson wore a hairpiece, though, because he didn't normally wear that, Ryanosuke! You clown! <laughs> you should be in that wig! <laughs> so then why on earth would he have been wearing something like that? Mm, my polo does seem to suit the man, one might say. Disagree. Mm, I wouldn't say that. Photograph will be submitted as evidence, please, counsel. Hey, hang on, wait. Is this a fancy, fangle-dangled new color photograph? Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're right, it is. Ah. Cheating. Tut, tut, tut. And what became of the trunk that the red-haired victim was supposedly carrying? I was informed that no trunk was found at the scene. So Dead it just body. disappeared. Oh, you spent it was a zone of fuck, hold on, let's try that again. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know no. what you said. <laughs> no! <laughs> We definitely saw him in the dog going in, though. No question about that. God, she never stops moving. Wrong. <laughs> Shut up, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she tries now. God damn it, you fucking observed matter. <laughs> you quantum bitch. <laughs> it's quantum really, it's bitch. Really funny, Sip. By which presumably you mean the gunshot. I sell these th little things, don't I? How would I know what a gunshot sounds like? You're so dumb. But I've always thought it probably sounds a bit like this, doesn't it? And you say that you heard the noise almost as soon as you saw the defendant here enter the building. That's right. It was almost straight away. Bang! It went. Just like that. Well, he's the Reaper, isn't he? It's what the French call a fate accompli. Uh, Just ima imagine around, me big, like... it's, imagine me as British Jason Griffith Usopp attempting to deliver that line where he speaks in French. We don't have to imagine. We can go back. No, it's too okay. late. <laughs> <laughs> when the Reaper's around, people are going in the ground. I mean, that's what he does, isn't it? I think we get the message. The Reaper couldn't allow the inspector to live after he discovered his secret hideout. I guess you could call that a repercussion. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that firework. <laughs> Pipe bomb. <laughs> Pipe bomb. There can be no clearer motive for the crime. Mm, yes. It's, cer it's certainly an eminently credible motive. Great. And at that point, you ran inside, is that correct? Bebo! He's so cold! I'm I'm not surprised they brought him back. I actually would have been more surprised if they didn't, because he had so much personality in his animations. I'm so sad this is what's become of Beppo. Not surprised though. Um 
So, when gossip ran to see what happened, uh, did you go to? Well, me, I'm a bit hampered, you see. All the signs are that there uh, that I can't move very well. Uh, I'm causing you were, you were way behind, presumably, with that sandwich board around your neck and that big sign in your hand. What a great burden you bear. Pardon me for asking, Mr. Sandwich, but is it possible you and I have met before? <laughs> I'm not a... Okay, not a hodo. That is Mr. Beppo. Our best <laughs> friend. <laughs> You, you know too much. Pipe bomb throws it at the ground at his feet like a smoke bomb dies. <laughs> no. I picture you know too much. Pipe bomb dives bodily sideways over the bench like a swimmer into a pool and then explodes as he is the pipe bomb. <laughs> I, I'm not anybody, me. The signs are what make me who I am now. I sign, therefore I am. I know ASL, which is useless because we are in Britain. <laughs> you're, you're, you're combining philosophers there, Peppo. <laughs> <laughs> so you weren't employed as an omnibus driver just under a year ago then? S skipped in chat! Pepe Bombi! might be mistaken, but I believe his trembling has intensified, Mr. Narihodo. Yes, I agree. I believe he is degenerating, unfortunately. I believe he's a degenerate. He's no! clearly been through a lot. Heart up, heart bep. <laughs> what does it say? I literally can't read it. Hot uh, artwork? I don't know. Uh, uh, Turn oh. down King Henry Street and the Black Widower's arms is just there. I'm Sandwich. Oh, dear, you've made him hide behind his sign. Life is full of surprises. Alright. Oh, hot advice. Okay. So, then, you were the first person to arrive on the scene. Is that right? That I was kicked the door open like a professional I didn't. Yelling, what's going on for you? <laughs> Little fancy exclaims all he heard was a man scream, though. And was it dark inside the room? Oh my god. No, no dark at all. There were candles burning on the wall. Really? Yeah. And there was a fella collapsed on the floor. Brang. 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 Wait, hang on. Brang. 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 <laughs> So Marissa Choose talks to their us. so Marissa talks to their cats because they meow a specific way and they go brown brown. I can <laughs> hear it. <clears throat> Just between us, it's the first thing I noticed when I got inside. Ah, I see. Even though Lord Van Zeeks claims not to have seen any the such lights on the wall, accent makes it so much worse. <laughs> Explain to me what wet accent sounds like, and why is it what I'm doing? Walk, walk up to the acting coach, ask her to teach uh, me an accent. She said, "I say, is this accent wet? Is this accent creepy or wet?" She laughs. She says, "It's not wet or creepy." So okay, teaches me the accent. It's wet. It's wet. <laughs> The next thing I know is there's someone standing right beside the body. I can do a wet accent. The next thing I know is there's someone standing right beside the body. Painful. Oh, gross. The accused, <laughs> Beric Van Zeeks. Why are you calling me gross? That's right, the pale-faced reaper himself. I was a little shocked, I won't deny it, but I'm no lily liver coward. I stood my ground and gave that reaper a cold hard stare myself. Oh, horrible. You shit your pants. <laughs> you shit your pants and leave you... Peppo to clean it. <laughs> you were shitting in the farting the whole time. Do you have something to add, Mr. Sandwich? That was the gunshot. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> have you never had the shotgun shit? Shut the fuck up. Next bit. <laughs> Next bit. There's really nothing to me. Empty in the head I am. Just two slices with no middle. <laughs> so, 
So I don't know what you could want with a little old Beppo. I think that maybe you just remembered something. Having heard Mr. Gossip's latest statement, I mean. Well, what I think is, we're all nothings, really. We try to dress ourselves up as something else, but at the end of the day, we're all just street sellers. As a North Valley sandwich, keep your trap shut now! Unless he orders to make you into a real sandwich. Transcendental sandwich. Ooh, when he saw the reaper, he fell clean over on his backside. That's it. Uh, you rotten beg, I told you to keep that a secret. He screamed, he did. Screamed and scrambled off on all fours. That's what I wanted to say. I still hear the screams. Beppo still hears the... Thank you very much, Beppo. <laughs> oh, bro, I've had enough of you. I'm going to punch you right in the gut. What? Starts typing. Sandwich is blocking him. <laughs> Why is he punching like fucking Popeye? Ba 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 ba! Ora 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 ora! Hey, I don't think they're gonna. Ora ora! I, I can't do a Popeye. <laughs> Mr. Gossip, is this true? The floor is this slippery. That's why. Planted my hand in a filthy pool of blood, didn't I? Yuck! What? A pool of blood? It was literally on the ground. The board was lying flat on the ground. But listen here, even when I was sprawled on the floor, I still be giving that reaper a cold hard stand, don't you forget it. Let's just go back a little. Did you say you no. got blood on your hand? I, I did, I. It happens to the best of us at times, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm at work the other day. <laughs> so I was scared. <laughs> so I slipped over. Can we just keep that between us, can't we? That'll cost us sixpence. No, Mr. Gossip. I'm going to tell everyone at school tomorrow. I'm going to have to ask you to add that information to your formal testimony. Ah, uh, if I must. <laughs> the witness will amend his testimony to include the aforementioned details at once. If I Elon must. <laughs> Ooh. So don't forget blood on this. Is that the photo? Because there's no blood. No, it's on the back of the um, on the back the of the board. board. Okay. The back of the board. Okay, there is blood. All right, I'll trust you guys. I feel like we're half a step ahead. Yeah. No, you're right. Okay, good job. I wouldn't have tried. Color. I wouldn't have thought to try that this early. So yeah, fair. So you wiped off the blood from your. The real trick of Ace Attorney is figuring out how how ahead of the mystery or behind of the mystery you need to be when you're presenting things. You're playing connect the dots, but some of them aren't numbered. So you wiped off the blood from your hand on the floor of the room. Are you quite sure about that? Well, well what else do you expect me to have done, eh? Huh? Does it really matter? Objection. <laughs> oh, we both have wimpy objections. <laughs> Objection? The police found no <laughs> such handprint on the floor. Oh, my apologies. The police found no such handy on the floor during their investigation. Bloody! What exactly Objection. is the Um, excuse me? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening in my courtroom? <laughs> oh no, the girls, they are fighting. fighting. If you li listen to your heart, you will underhand. Certainly, there was no bloody found on the floor. What are you trying to say? There was a bloody in blood <laughs> left very clearly on the scene. <laughs> on the back of this notice board. I don't think I've ever seen him in that pose with this expression before. He's angry now. <laughs> I'm a scared of wood, I am! My father uh, was killed by a tree! Ah, <laughs> uh, yes indeed. Indisputably, a handprint in the distinctive color of blood! I oh, it did right! That's my hand! I know it anywhere! Hot actual <laughs> hero! <laughs> the witness, very definitive, definitely testified that he wiped his hand on the floor. Any handprints on the back of the board are irrelevant. Any what? Objection. What did I say? <laughs> I don't know. It just, just, I just heard static. <laughs> you said that word and it just turned into a foghorn. <laughs> Not if the board itself had Ooh. fallen over onto the floor. <laughs> uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I like this comment.
comment in chat was, it's funny if uh, Ryunosuke and Kazuma started arguing in Japanese and literally only Suzato could understand them. <laughs> <laughs> they start arguing back and forth. Um, what are they saying? Oh, Kazuma's throwing the case. <laughs> <laughs> It's like beautiful Japanese and occasional. Oh! <laughs> In that case, it's quite possible for the witness's handprint to have ended up there. It's like when they use fucking loan words or, um, or, uh, what, I forget what the fuck they're called, but, uh, when they use, like, English words in their sentence and yeah, it loan like words. stands out. I just look at the floor. Oh. I was just going to say, have you ever seen, there's this great clip of, I think it's Toby Fox. It's to I was literally <laughs> thinking of that. <laughs> I don't remember what word he says in English. but It's, it's Toho Project. He yeah, says Toho Project in perfect English in, in the like, middle of a Japanese In sentence. like aggressively, I am an American speaking in nasal English. And it's very funny. It's just like, da -da 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 Toho Project. <laughs> it's <laughs> fucking hilarious. <laughs> just look at the floor plan of the room. The notice board was in the opposite corner of the room to the victim, and in an upright position. So they moved it. Even if it had somehow been toppled and was lying on the floor at the time, it would have been a considerable distance from the body. That is listen, fair. Listen, I have something to tell. We need to tell Kazuma about the concept of moving objects. We can't. You know how scared he gets! No, he has to know! He's been on the moon too long! Gravity is different for him, I know! You know, I've been thinking of having a new catchphrase, thinking like, Ponk? <laughs> <laughs> I like it! No, no, not you two! Oh, God! Just, I fell over when I just, came across the body! Instead of his wimpy-ass objection, excuse me, just, Ponk! <laughs> Ponk! <laughs> So I was basically right next to the corpse, not on the other side of the room. In other words, the defense's assertion is contradictory. Yes, it is. Wait! There's a very definitive contradiction here, for which there must be a reason. I take it you've formulated a proper hypothesis, counsel, regarding this apparent discrepancy between the witness's account and the handy found at the scene. <laughs> I love the smile at the end of that sentence. God. At the, there, end, at the scene. When Marissa and I were finishing Dark Deity after the uh, DLC dropped, like, because the way we originally read through it was the main character is a bad old English dub, we decided that was his family accent, and he has an aunt and a dad in that game. And... <laughs> It got worse and worse, and we started pronoun uh, pronouncing silent E's at the end of the word. So this would be, I have E, my lord. And uh, both of oh us separately uh, had words start with, um, like, come, we must away. So it was just Marissa, come, E, we. I was there for that. <laughs> Outstanding. I have, my lord. This discrepancy between the witness's account and the location of the bloody hand is explained by... I mean, I would guess the board moving. Yeah, the board moving. Yeah, it's, like, yeah. shit can be moved. The real contradiction here is the handprint itself, not where it was found. As the cord can see, the cord can see, it's upside down. Oh, good gracious, so it is. If the witness had put his hand against the board, the fingers should be pointing upwards. I mean, the what, my lord? <laughs> the handy. It's the fingies. Fingers. What? What does that tell us? It tells you so in chat. What the fuck is this movement of which you speak? <laughs> Punk! <laughs> no, no, he's getting upset. <laughs> It tells us one simple fact. When this handprint was made, the board must have been lying on the floor, as I previously, suggest uh, previously suggested. Which means that after the incident, it must have been moved. What does moved mean? It's that thing you just did, right there. Huh? You're claiming that somebody moved the notice board after the shooting. Then tell the court who. I don't know. 
I'm just living my life, Kazuma. Hey, man, I'm also jumping to conclusions. You know, uh, anybody can do it. I, not I don't just you. know that yet, but the point is, when you consider all the testimony we've heard so far, we can now be very clear on one point. And that would be? The position of the notice board at the time of the incident, my lord. So, Council, I must ask you to clarify your assertion ah, for the court. You got it right. <laughs> Ass! I know. <laughs> at the time of the incident, where do you maintain the notice board was situated? Uh, I don't know, but I'd, I'd have to guess it was probably Gregson's hand. He said he was, he said he was right by the body, so it was probably around there, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Let's, yeah. Let's try it. I would say closer to the door. The tiny... Like, like in between Gregson and the door. I, I'm just gonna once again open up the strategy wiki because it's nice to have and I don't trust. Mm -hmm. I don't trust point out the spots. I don't trust like that. I don't trust like Not that. Not after the incident. Yo, I love that it just bolds like press statement one, blah, blah, blah. And one of these is pursue sandwich. <laughs> Go okay. get him. Uh, yeah, just to the right of the doorway. So, yeah. Oh, sorry. Trying to manage tabs. This is the right of the doorway. Yeah. Take that. Yeah, they wouldn't have noticed it. Locked nope, that's uh, this is the only possible location. Location. Immediately adjacent to the doorway. If the court would think back to the testimony given by the defendant earlier, right, because he couldn't see him. I assume that was just because the door was open, but mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He said that when he entered the room it was dark and he couldn't see the body. Ah! Boy ache! If, he, if the notice board had been here, the body would have been completely hidden from view, and the light from the candles would have been blocked, making the room appear darker. Um, excuse me, but the accused also claims that the victim's body simply appeared before him. That's true, or in his precise words. Pong. Give me your best Van Zeek stuff. Just as I- I'm, This is Suzato doing a Van Zeeks, okay? This is funny. <laughs> Just as I picked the fire from the examiner, <laughs> the door flew open, and I heard a man scream. Jason Griffith Usopp has competition! <laughs> it was only then that the body of the ins of Inspector Gregson appeared before me. <laughs> what do you imagine Zeeks' face is looking at her right now? <laughs> he is crying! <laughs> Why are there two of me? <laughs> I don't know about calling it a scream, but you was talking about me and no mistake. Because it was me that kicked the door open. If you look again at the floor plan, and the floor plan, consider what would happen if the door to the room was thrown open with force. Bonk. Ah. <laughs> Bung. That, that can't. The door hitting it was the gunshot. <laughs> Oh my god. No, the, the they ran in because they heard the gunshot. Yeah, no, it would, it <laughs> would be god. The door hitting it. <laughs> <laughs> the door struck the notice board, knocking it over and making the victim's body visible. Good gracious. My client has this told nothing but the truth. This is such a fucked up thing to say in chat. So we've been looking at Gregson's body outline on the ground and it's like Gregson was praying. <laughs> <laughs> he has simply described what he saw. Erg. Hot. Actually. Everybody got their ass out. Yeah. Except me. <laughs> order. Order. Council. Has. Bleh. How has this not <laughs> Sorry, I got my... a bit of my beard in my mouth. I got hair in my mouth. <laughs> After the incident, somebody must have righted the board and moved it. After it was ponked over. <laughs> Into the position where the Ponclis, myself, and my <laughs> colleagues saw it. it. Sounds French. Ponclis. Ponclis. <laughs> the the Akucha Ponk. <laughs> <laughs> We're investigating the room. Oh no. Witness! What have you to say for yourself? What? <coughs> Me, my lord. You and your fellows were there at the scene before anyone else. It goes without saying that you must know something about the position of the notice board. No. The witness will stand to testify again. You will explain exactly what you did upon arriving at the scene of the crime. Uh, stop looking over your glasses in me. I'll give the message. Le punk. Le punk. 
I don't know anything about that there, no sport. I just want my hand on it, that's all. <laughs> don't look at me. I haven't got a clue about it. I was doing business with some second years at the time. How how old are you to be selling fireworks to children? <laughs> she is five. <laughs> Oh, it's a mystery. Mm -hmm. How old is Beppo? Beppo! Oh, we know Beppo is old. He is the youngest. Beppo the younger. God, I always forget how baby Suzato is. Oh, just a little lady. Oh, I don't know anything about anything. I'm just a bystander, me. Just a sign at the crossroads of a life. It was that Reaper, I bet he's got a face that screams BORED! I can't see how this changes anything anyway. The detective still died when we heard the gunshot. Because Beppo killed him. <laughs> what was that? None of you can elaborate further. No, wait, uh, d d explain, Beppo. No. No. Shaken by the crime they witness, and with only the light of a few candles and an oil lamp by which to see. We can't expect these witnesses to be able to give a more precise amount of, of what happened. Account. Account of what happened. Well, ah. then, by that logic, certainly we can't expect Lord Van Zeeks to have seen the body. Ha, He's case closed. Ha, ha, so shut funny. Shut your butt. <laughs> right, yeah. I don't pay to expect too much. No, we're, oh, we're don't, moving. It don't we're, pay we're to going. expect too much. It's man's endless quest for knowledge that's destroying the world. <laughs> that's oh, what I damn. think. Damn. Do you? Really? <laughs> In any case, as this testimony shows, even if the notice board was moved by somebody following the incident, it makes no difference. When the gunshot rang out, the accused was the only person at the scene. <laughs> so, could it literally have been something as simple as somebody else was hiding in the room? Maybe. Maybe. In in short, the only person who could possibly have committed this crime is Beric Van Zeeks. None of this wrangling over the board changes that simple fact. And besides, how did no one notice the board? It's a notice board. Case closed. <laughs> what a will joke to make. <laughs> Why would I make it? <laughs> Does the defense still wish to cross-examine the witnesses despite the circumstances? Most certainly, my lord. I love Beppo. My Very well, then you may proceed, Who oh, is this a nice Beppo you keep speaking about? I would, I've the, never heard of him. The Fae stole my name. <laughs> I had to sell my name for firewood. <laughs> they said, oh, can I have your name for a sandwich? And I completely misunderstood. I completely misunderstood, Melina. <laughs> I completely misunderstand. <laughs> that's that's a fucking Oh, I completely misunderstand. <laughs> <laughs> hey Bruntilda, come on down to Senor Mort Gates guard gate. So so you admit that it was the board you my you wiped your bloody on? Admit it? What's to admit? It's plain as day for all to see. A smashing point of my rod hand. Perhaps you wanted to hide that handy. So you righted the notice board and pushed it into the corner, did you? The fuck you say to me? No, no, imagine the weight of that great lump. You look like a powerful and well nurtured man. <laughs> Child, I'm just <laughs> so you were trying to hide that handy. No, imagine the weight of that great lump. <laughs> well, <laughs> see anybody else moving the board? I got nerves of steel, I can tell you, but even I have my limits. There was a body on the floor in front of me, and the Grim Reaper himself standing over it. Someone in chat notices your love. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Ooh, and was... What's this? <laughs> <laughs> Precious little light inside, Arthur. My bottom lip was all a quiver. 
In other words, this witness is unable to give definite definite testimony on that point. God, I really Christ. need I really need to make a next bit in moments. Yes, yeah, so it would seem. Alright. <laughs> when you say you are doing business with them, you mean you are selling them fireworks. Yeah, what else? There's a primary school just around the corner, see? Those cheeky little so-and-sos have got a plan to blow their school to kingdom come. <sighs> so what the fuck? on them. <laughs> Letting the teachers know what they're up to. This Chaotic little... neutral. This bit! <laughs> oh, you have. Yeah, I wouldn't want anyone to get hurt. So I let the school know the kids are playing with dodgy toys. Then, praise the lord, the teachers take all the fireworks off them. You little shit. <laughs> and then, praise the lord again, the kids all come back to to me to buy more. Everyone's happy, see? This is just Sophia Arampane. This is 100% just Sophia. <laughs> what a racket. Cause. And sometimes the teachers give me a little bonus to thank me for the fuck <laughs> Wow! <laughs> it's a busy old life selling explosives. <laughs> Venus wow. is a guileful goddess indeed. Hmm. Well, telling bareface lies. She just threw that in the me. Fucking Somebody I'm said, mmm. I'm ever so good at it. Mmm. Mmm. Bebo has thoughts. Bebo believes. Does <laughs> any. Please tell me, does anybody else see this thing above my head? <laughs> I've come for the rest of your name. <laughs> Something wrong, Miss. We're never gonna get through this case. Something wrong, Mr. Sandwich. If, if I said it was, could we just leave it at that? Would that be the end of it? Holy um, fuck, Beppo. No. Did Miss Venus's statement now just bring something to mind, perhaps? <clears throat> she is a dirty, lying wench. Philosophical thoughts. Deep philosophical thoughts. Hmm? Let's say there was a great liar, and that great liar said, without batting an eye, telling barefaced lies is kind of my thing, I'm ever so good at it. Would those words of hers be a lie too? Oh my God. Or the truth? In which case, she's an old liar. You're just stalling, give me your name. Oh, it is a hellish <laughs> paradox, that one. Don't you think? Someone in chat, Beppo is an MI6 agent. <laughs> I'm not entirely <laughs> sure, to be honest. But it seems to me you're suggesting Miss Venus has been lying, are you? <laughs> no, she's going to get me. What are you on about, old man? Trying to cause trouble, are you? Keep on like that. And I'll wrap your whole body in firecrackers <laughs> and set him off. That'll give you something to tremble about. <laughs> oh, please. At least I'll be warm. <laughs> you have a startlingly disturbing mind behind that sweet and innocent face, young lady. Can Fear I not me. be on trial anymore? <laughs> please. <laughs> Wrap, whether you're wrapped in, I can't do this bit, I'm laughing too hard. <laughs> I so, thank you. Miss Venus is a motherfucker. Is that what you're saying, Mr. Sandwich? Well, if it means I'll be burning in hellfire for the rest of my days, so be it. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Can you elaborate, please, sir? I want to die! <laughs> <laughs> Old blabbermouth here headed for the room where the gunshot seemed to come from. But there was someone else who crept up the stairs behind him, too. That's right! That rotten liar over there! <laughs> I love this bitch. I hope she's the murderer, even though there's no way. You mean to say that you did, in fact, betake yourself to the scene of the crime after all? What did I tell you, huh? Yay! 
I said I was good at telling barefaced lies, didn't I? Yes, you are. You mentioned court. That revelation rocked the whole courtroom, <laughs> didn't it? See how does it feel when I impersonate you, Suzato? Who knew firecrackers <laughs> pack such a punch? You, you didn't even try, like you did. <laughs> So you did indeed visit the scene of the crime, did you, young lady? Good grief! Well, now you come to mention it, I suppose perhaps I do clearly remember climbing the stairs to the room, yeah? Why are you lying? <laughs> Why are you always lying? Either you clearly remember it or you don't. Well, I shall consider fitting punishment for this perjurious act later. Perjurious, sorry. For the time being, you will immediately amend your testimony to reflect the truth. Oh, yes, my lord, of course. Evil. Evil bitch for no reason. Maybe I Oh, did. sorry, I should have actually read what that was. Maybe I did sneak along behind gossip and have a little peek into the room where it all happened. But no one else was in the room where it happened. Hold it. You make a habit of lying, do you, Miss Venus? Well, I suppose so. I don't really know, to be fair. If you want my advice, though, I take everything I say with a pinch of salt. That's what I put in my fireworks to dull them down so they're useless. <laughs> All right, but you did in fact go to the room where the victim was killed on in the day in question, didn't you? <laughs> oh, please, as if I would. I can't think of anything more terrifying. The truth, please. Well, all right, just a bit then. Just a bit? I, I mean, a girl my age is curious about stuff, you know. Did you want, did you touch anything at the scene? Oh, please, as if I would. I mean, there was a dead body on the floor. The truth, please. <laughs> oh, well, all right, just a bit then. I had a look to see if there was anything I could sell. Did she sell so I did give shit. the place of... So I did give the place a once-over. There was nothing to come right home about. She snuck in behind gossip and was just oh. fucking lying for no reason. She's a little piece of shit. <laughs> right. Now, I hesitate to ask, but you didn't move the notice board by any chance, did you? <clears throat> Please, as if I would touch anything like that. Just a few bits of loose change is all I had. The truth, please. <laughs> Well, all right then. I thought there might be something worth having underneath it. So I blasted the flipping thing. Uh, sorry, I flipped the blasted thing. You're, you're telling us that you did move that board? <laughs> <laughs> I think that did slip out, didn't it? What? You daft bomb pot! I don't believe it. The girl doesn't think. <laughs> so, did you find anything then? Something that you might have taken, perhaps, to, to sell? Oh, please, <laughs> might be so lucky. Now! <laughs> <laughs> I might have found this old pocket watch under the nervous board, I suppose. But I better just... Ah! I'm Gina! Oh. So it was you, was it? You're the one who took it! G Gina? Young lady, may I remind you where you are? That watch, that watch there. That was a present to Inspector Gregson from the yard for the big case he solved ten years ago. The professor case, no doubt. The boss used to wind it up every evening without fail when he was waiting for his grub to come in at the pub. I see. I swiped it off him once and blimey he was upset. He gave me a right earful. He said he... He hadn't missed a day in the last ten years polishing it and winding it. He gave so, me a right earful, but left me my left alone. <laughs> it, might, it meant the world to him, that watch did. Possibly not the best thing to go diving for, then. It's, an, uh, it's not all that, though. This character is what I wanted Gina to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I took it to Jabez's that night to ask how much it was worth. But the old dealer wouldn't touch it. Wouldn't give me a penny for it. Said it wasn't working. Knocked about worthless. Knocked about worthless. He called it. Ugh! I knew I should have lifted it. 
Hot actual hero? <laughs> that watch must be submitted as evidence at once. Oh, please, just just so long as you promise to give it back when we're done. No. no. Not a chance. I'll swipe it off you if you try and get your grubby mess on again. That's enough. Hand the watch to the bailiff forthwith. Now, now, children, watch your manners. Good lord! It's a bit shit! Oh, the glass appears to be broken. More than likely, it shattered when the inspector was shot. It doesn't tick anymore, either. Which is why Jabez didn't want it. What a waste, huh? Yes, indeed. It appears to have stopped at the hour of five. Oh. Exactly when the gunshot was heard, then. Well, if that's the case, then Gregson got there late because his his thing was to get there for five. So if he got shot as soon as he got in the fucking door, then it would have. the prosecution's claim, of course. I mean, if that's what happened, then he got there right on time because it stopped at five and he got shot. Yeah, but that means that somebody else knew that he was going to be there at that exact time. Okay. Well, it would appear that the mystery of the moving notice board has been solved, at least. Then, as predicted, it had very little bearing on the case. The glass over the face really is badly cracked. Look. What a shame when the inspector clearly looked after it so carefully. Imagine Mr. Sholmes could repair it, don't you? Get, don't give that to him. Yes, I should think so. He's very adept at things like this. A useful man to have around, in fact, has a gun to his back. But kindly remember that he's a great detective, Mr. Narahodo, not an odd job man. Not odd job? Yeah, chat points out, didn't it say that he got there 15 minutes early? It did, yeah. There's a tiny little stub sticking up from this small hoe here, look. I suppose there must have been a little knob or something on that for setting the time. In that case, seeing as how we know the inspector took such good care of this watch, probably broken the incident occurred, didn't it? Yes, of course. Which could mean that there's a small part of the watch still at the scene, maybe. It's the fireplace. Was it the weird key thing we found? I don't remember finding a weird key. Oh, this? Well, at the end of, oh. yeah, the little policeman figure. Oh. Maybe... Oh, I don't think we'll be able to like put them- Like a winder? Eh. Let's see. Oh yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, that does look like a like a clock key. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I don't think I, we can do anything with that yet, though. <clears throat> uh... Keep going. Now then! I was reading <laughs> chat, I'm sorry! <laughs> I don't know anything, I'm just a bit Uh, apparently there, there's something else to examine on the watch. Probably on the bottom of it. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. yeah oh, there okay. you go. There we go. Yep, good call, Siv. There's a keyhole, it's a winder. Why, why, why? Well, what is it doing down there, though? What, it's... is it shy? <laughs> yep. I just to be super thorough. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing down here. Okay. I can't imagine we've seen the key. What we've seen, Mrs. Otto. Oh, okay. That's unusual. Do you think this could be the key for Gregson's watch? Oh, yes, it could be. Let's try it at once. There's not a moment to lose. Council, the cross and... This feels familiar. I knew it. A perfect fit. And look! The inspector's watch has started going again! Ah. So it has obviously not... Uh, what? So it has obviously just not been wound, that's all, or something. What is it, Miss Suzato? Well, if the watch isn't actually broken after all... I have a feeling it could have profound implications. She's deep in thought now. Perhaps I'd better start thinking deeply too. Or thinking at all. Okay. Back to Beppo. But 
You did go to see what had happened in the room, didn't you? Fresno Street is my whole world. It's all I know, and I know all of it. I have to make it my business to know if I want to hold my sign up high. So you did go to see what had happened? It's not the destination that's important. It's how you get there, isn't it? Did you notice the notice board in the room? If you think about it, we're both the same species, aren't we? Both members of the sign family. Hot Alfredo. But if I'd spotted it, I might have tried to trip it up out of a sense of rivalry, I admit. Someone really needs to tell you that you're homo sapiens, not homo sinians. <laughs> Sorry, that mean I that you didn't notice the board. I was just caught very off guard by Rinosuke saying the word homo <laughs> for a second. <laughs> I can only repeat what I said before. I don't know anything about anything. I'm just a little guy. <laughs> Which case, just who was responsible for removing the notice? We know. I have no idea who it could be. <laughs> it was a reaper, I bet. Okay. Huh? Fucking goddamn it. Okay. Do we? Do I haven't we need pressed to press her new statement. I think I already did. Because that's how we got the watch, because she snuck in and got it underneath the notice board. Okay. What exactly do you mean by that? Oh no, oh, I've got a popsicle in my mouth. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, come on now, don't tell us you've not noticed. She looks like he hates everything in the world, that fella. But not notice Paul, so the one thing he likes, you can see it in his eyes. I can't say I'd ever noticed. Bored. I'll tell you one thing for free, though. I never took me eyes off that man on the floor, or off the Reaper, not for a second. Sorry? I've got four eyes, you see? Well, that I, I was that scared, I couldn't. You never know what a fiend like that might do if you look away, do you? If you didn't take your eyes off the defendant, you should be able to confirm categorically whether or not he was the one who moved the notice board. But we got no idea who did that! I that I can. The Reaper did nothing of the sort. I can swear to that. Couldn't have missed it if he'd heave the thing up right again and dragged it into the corner. Right, glad we cleared that up. What happened to the face that screams bored? I feel your pain, Kazuma. <laughs> Alright, let's just... Okay, hang on. Mm -hmm. do, do, do. I'm just looking what to do because I feel like we've got stuff. Okay. Uh, okay. I only imagine it's something to do with the watch, but I'm not sure what they want. Was it the object? Something about. It's this yeah. one for some reason. I'm afraid that's not necessarily the case. Beppo? <laughs> <laughs> At the scene, we found this key to the winder of the inspector's pocket watch. A key? Yes. And having wound the pocket watch, we discovered that it in fact still works. You see, the watch didn't stop because it was broken at all. And that fact completely undermines one of the most fundamental premises on which this entire case has been built. What? Look at my butt. <laughs> Look at my butt. Order! 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 But, but council! I have to wear the sandwich board. It is a handicap, otherwise people on the street get distracted by Beppo's ass! Beppo's <laughs> powerful badonk! Next bit. Please. You, you're, Lock, it's your character! Exactly five o'clock! <laughs> yeah, which is just when we are at the gun shop. It is exactly the hour! The time that was showing on the watch tells us nothing other than when it wound down. It's merely a coincidence that it happened to be at five o'clock. Even if that's true, the three witnesses here all heard the gunshot at five o'clock. <laughs> Chat. So that's obviously when this crime was committed. 
Beppo used to be called cake due to his grand posterior. <laughs> Same bit, please! <laughs> no, that doesn't hold. Why not? Recall what Inspector Lestrade said only moments ago. Well, I don't sound anything like that! <laughs> the victim is... <laughs> He's alive! The victim was in the habit of winding this watch uh, once a day in the evening. We can reasonably assume, therefore, that he would ha uh, have... The oh my god. That he wound... That he wound the timepiece on the evening before he died as well. Yes, that would be entirely reasonable. But if that's the case, you wouldn't expect the watch to have completely wound down by five o'clock the following day. Oh, no, that, no. Just, that just went. In summer... Why is my thing wiggling so much? Hang on. See if I can. I think it's your eyes, Jello. No, it's, it's an earthquake. No. Sorry, Beppo thought it would be fine to twerk. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Moon, you say? <laughs> so many things. <laughs> what, what do you mean, Jello? I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> In what scenario would a crazy little old man think it would be appropriate to work in the middle of a party? <laughs> I'm finishing well, my last. You guys. I'm finishing my last chocolate coin. <laughs> I am just sitting here. Somehow yeah, you've done nothing wrong. Let's make that clear. Sometimes I feel like these streams are just an experiment of how much our partners will put up with me and Will. <laughs> Honestly, I think we're just solidifying our place. <laughs> what is this, a fucking King of the Hill game? Ding, 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 ding. I tell you, man, I was on the street corner shaking my ass, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come in! <laughs> Sorry! The, <laughs> the evening before the day of the incident, <laughs> and the gunshot rang out of that room. Oh, my tea's yeah. done. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go get. I'm gonna go get my water, bear, babe. I'm gonna do the same. Actually, my mouth's been really weird. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some more tea. Well, you should have been doing more wet accents. Hang on. Stop hey, being chat. funny! I'm, I'm away from the computer. Oh, it's so funny, me. Oh, thank you, Aqua, for for sharing um, the fact that yeah, no, there's there's some new plushies out. Uh, the gold collection of uh, Finica and Ramsey, and they look really nice. And Jello did a really nice job with a little commercial for them. He was five foot three, had a big ass, the big ass of a woodwind player. <laughs> <laughs> the inspector was already unable to wind his watch. You, you can't mean. <laughs> you chased off your partners. <laughs> what would stop a man winding his watch if he's been in the habit of winding it every single evening for ten years? The obvious answer is that he was already dead. I am twerking too now! <laughs> Here we go. Order! Order! Council! That is the most extraordinary cl Objection! Oh, that was you, sorry. Objection! Extraordinary isn't the word, it's absurd! You claim he was already dead the night before? Do you really think <gasps> that Scotland Yard's coroner would have overlooked something? Hey, did we not see the last case? Dang. Literally, it does not say time of death on the Hootsuma Hutsu, yeah. so... Uh, yeah. Well, um... On that subject, there is something rather surprising. Real quick, <clears> I just <throat> want you guys to know that when I went to get water, <laughs> Sith followed me into the kitchen and collapsed on the floor laughing. <laughs> <laughs> My back really hurt, okay? <laughs> we did it! actually an... You did what? Killed me? Yes. I mean, to be fair, Beppo's back hurt too, because like he really gets <laughs> into it. 
<laughs> stop. You <laughs> stop now. There's actually an omission on the coroner's report. Beppo's back used to hurt more before his top Can you surgery. Stop me? <laughs> <laughs> God Christ, you guys are gonna have to pay the bill for my fucking massage therapy for my spine. <coughs> Time of death is not noted. Uh, that's right. Wait a minute, you're forgetting that my legs went from under me when I kicked that door in. Yes, what do you mean? <laughs> like I said, I played in my hand in a dirty great poodle of blood. Yes, so the victim's blood hadn't dried, it was fresh. He catches okay. on fast, doesn't he? But that blood could be explained in any number of ways. The floor was bleeding. Wood is real. Finally, someone else understands. It could have been put there otherwise. <gasps> oh, that just... All right. Does my learned friend think that fresh blood is available on every street corner? In London? Yeah. I don't know. This girl's selling fireworks to children. Uh... Well, it needn't necessarily have been human blood, of course. All right, we now... are in London. You can get pig's blood anywhere. You can get, um... Whoa, something fell over in the kitchen. Mirror me. Whoa. Ooh. It could have been vampire blood. We've been told previously <laughs> that Scotty R has no way to identify blood as human. Problem is currently being researched. As present, you are correct. It is beyond our abilities. So then, the chicken's blood could have been used, for example? It's certainly a possibility that it wasn't the inspector's blood at all. Can you actually do what it would sound like if Van Zeeks was doing an impression of Susanna? <laughs> oh, sure. It's um, certainly a possibility that it wasn't the inspector's blood at all. No, wow, that was really good. <laughs> you will not take my soul. It is mine. Thank you. <laughs> but the gunshot was heard at five o'clock that afternoon. That's beyond question. It was a fucking gunshot, you numpty. Is it though? What? Given that the time of death of the victim was already been called into question, it isn't beyond the realms of possibility that what these witnesses heard wasn't a gunshot at all. <laughs> Please. What are you trying to say? It was not know what we heard, and it was a loud bang that came from that there room. Beppo wants to die. Why do I still have my whip? <laughs> Holy fuck, Beppo. Beppo. Put it away. Beppo, Beppo gotta make that money. Now you listen to me. <laughs> the street seller's ears are his livelihood. I don't doubt your ears, sir. But <laughs> all you can... God damn it. But all you can state with certainty is that you heard a noise. Explain yourself then, Council. Beppo is a Belmont. A noise that sounds like a gunshot could have been made with this wig. <laughs> Beppo is in charge. A <laughs> gun! <laughs> Sandwich. <laughs> Good comment in chat. Beppo got the whip. <laughs> that's, now that's a piff line. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Something like this. I like that in this case he's very serious. The culprit oh. could have set off one of these to fake a gunshot. But gracious, the very fireworks <laughs> that are sold by the witness! Uh, now hold on a minute, are you saying that I did it? Yeah, die. My pretty little firecrackers and they make a little pop anyway, see? Not a hundred of them together. The Venus special that you sell for 600 pennies sounds like this. As the court can now attest, Suzato is dead. It sounds very much like a gunshot, in fact. You're trying to suggest that somebody set one of those fireworks off at the scene. I'm suggesting that somebody knew the defendant was in the room at five that day, and sought to implicate him by creating a sound like a gunshot for these peddlers on Fresno Street to hear. But even the accused himself has testified that he saw no one else in the room at the time. They dropped it down the chimney. Whether it was a gun, joke. <laughs> whether it was a gun or a firecracker, the only person present to cause that bang was Barrack Van Zeeks. I mean, they could have just thrown it in the room and they left. They could have thrown it through the window. 
That was where that the window. Um, yeah. Yeah. Window was busted. Oh right, there was. Yeah, the yep. window was busted there. Mm -hmm. Whiff of a match and my firecrackers go pop. See, that's why people like them. I fear for your fingers, young lady. Objection. Um, their fingies. <laughs> their fingies. Recently, during my time here in Britain, I've learnt of a very useful invention indeed. Something a called um a, Die, a gun, a time a bomb. A time bomb. Pipe bomb. Time bomb. Good heavens! Pipe bomb. I I feel like being like I've heard of a very useful little invention. A time bomb is a weird way to phrase it. Yes, a device that allows you to blow up whatever you like, whenever you like. Mr. Narodo, I worry about your unfortunate phrasing there. Maybe lead, uh, maybe lead to yet another international incident. Ah! Oh, no, 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 wait. Uh, it's the wherever you like part. Whenever you like. I'm not a terrorist. A timed device? Yes, exactly. A timed <laughs> device. Something of that nature could have been planted at the scene. A device that was <laughs> able to produce the sound of a gunshot long after the culprit had left. Your extravagant claim will have to be substantiated with evidence, Council. Bear B, I pour on my tea. I mean, it could be this, right? It's a, it's a, t it's a clock. It could also be the candle. Probably the candle, right? Oh, do you think it was a thing where it's not the... Because there was no bullet hole next to the candelabrum. Do you think they put the firework it, up there so then when the uh, candle got low enough, yeah. it ignited the... And then uh, that's why the rest of them kept going? As the court has already discussed, the tip of one of the candles in this candelabrum has been blown off. Indeed, because it was struck by the bullet, which presumably passed through the victim. I don't think that's possible, my lord. Not possible. Why? Because of the scorching. There are gunpowder scorch marks clearly visible on the broken candle. There are? Oh, goodness, yes. But is that not the case that there was also scorching on the victim around the bullet entry wound? That's right, there was. But as we heard earlier, scorching like that only occurs when the target is at very close range. A matter of centimeters from the gun. Ah. Which means that the scorching on the candle can't possibly be the result of a gunshot. You're suggesting it came from the fireworks. How can I be, eh? The fact that there's visible scorching on the candle suggests that the fireworks must have been right next to it when they exploded. <clears throat> or, to put it another way, the candle and fireworks were giant together. What? what a weird place. You know, I was them. thinking this in my mind. I was like, no, nah, that's too convoluted. That's too much of like some fucking stupid shit to set up. This isn't what's going on. And I come back and see this. The culprit somehow attached the firecrackers at a point partway down the candle. That's actually pretty clever. After mm -hmm. the killer had left the scene, the candle slowly burnt down along with the other two until eventually it ignited the fuse of the firecrackers, generating a loud bang. I wish they were positioned Beppo, Firework Girl, this guy, so their asses were creating a horizontal Verizon wireless bar. Important. And that is how these three witnesses came to believe they'd heard a gunshot at five o'clock. Oh, what a plot. And so I'm implying. wondering... Just real this quick, I'm wondering if Gregson is also not dead. And it's a switcheroo thing. I think Gregson's dead. I think okay. he's dead. Okay. And this implies that the victim could have died earlier than we had been led to believe. The previous day, even. No, 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 just hold on your horses. All is law here saw that victim going into the building, remember? I couldn't forget that flame-colored hair even if I wanted to. The person you saw entering the building wasn't the victim at all. Consider this. Uh, Obviously, anybody can wear a wig. So the person that these witnesses saw entering the building 15 minutes before the incident occurred could easily have been someone else entering uh, entirely wearing the red hairpiece. Someone else? D did you mean to say? It was the same person who contrived the firecracker trick. In other words, Inspector Gregson's killer. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, very impressive, Ryanosuke Naruhodo. Calls Why him up? My, full name? my learned friend, you Nipponese, <laughs> and your idea. With swapped bodies, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Alchemy. Alchemy. I'm really quite amazed you've come this far. Man, I hate it when they do a body swap episode and they don't switch, and they switch voice actor. Um, <laughs> bro. <laughs> but after all, wasn't I the one who told you that you had all the makings of a great defense lawyer? Oh, yeah. Take all the credit now, why don't you? Yeah. Can, real quick, can you read Cosimo with Cosimo's voice, but with Van Zeke's mannerisms for a line or two? Oh, and so keep Kazuma's voice, but okay. Yeah. I also noticed the lack of a time of death in this report. <laughs> a stark omission. <laughs> Evil. But as far as I'm concerned, this whole country's justice system leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> That's very Smackable. <laughs> That's very Do we just want this version of Cosmo from now on? <laughs> Cosmo! Exclamation point! Evil. evil. <laughs> Entirely your call. I do not mind. Order, prosecutor Asugi. What on earth do you mean by that statement? I hear that many of the leading members of Britain's judiciary are present to observe this trial today. Divorce arc. So we cannot allow even the slightest doubt be overlooked. Hunter Hunter's getting weird. <laughs> the defense's assertion about the time of death based on the victim's stopwatch is just a conjecture. But while the possibility exists that my learning oh my God. may be correct, <laughs> we have a duty to explore it. Mm, well, certainly I would agree with you. And what immediately comes to mind is, of course, what was Expector Gregson doing? And where did he go on the day before the incident? That's me, Expector Gregson. Right to stand. Nobody expected me to fucking die. <laughs> I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was with child. He was no. pregnant. <laughs> Inspector Gregnant! <laughs> do 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 Expector Gregnant! <laughs> uh oh! <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I. <laughs> there's this. There's this Tumblr post yeah. that starts with a hex maniac and then. No. It's like the. The god. Drawers y'all post and it's just like keeps building on itself in increasingly insane ways and at the end this is what it feels like to go through an unstable wormhole and I feel like that's how our yes ands are sometimes yeah yeah <laughs> the inspector yeah. always carried out his investigation. comment work in chat alone. he was preg of chip and fish <laughs> <laughs> what? his movements were treated as confidential within Scotland Yard even within the yard. However, considering the evidence we've been presented with so far, I'd say it's fairly apparent that ca what case the man was pursuing. Wouldn't you, my learned friend? I do have a feeling about what case he might have been investigating. Yes, I agree. <clears throat> Surely. My lord, the defense believes it can explain to the court the case that was being investigated by Inspector Gregson at the time of his death. Very well, counsel. Present your argument to the court. What evidence is suggestive of the case being investigated by the inspector on the day prior to the incident? Fucking board, duh. You would think it's the board. I'll check just cuz. Ah, okay. This is why we check. Yeah, it's the newspaper article, right? Yeah, the red hair. Mr. Wig. I believe this red hair piece points to the answer. Technically, the board would have also been right because there is a p yeah, article the on it. Clipping is there, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We might assume it was part of a disguise used to carry out an undercover investigation. Probably not. Such a brightly colored hairpiece would only serve to make the inspector more noticeable. Yes, that's quite true. It would definitely have made him stand out in a crowd. Except, that is, in a crowd of gentlemen from the Red Headed League. The, the Red Headed League? So, you'd already worked it out. 
What on earth is this all about? Is there such an extraordinary league of gentlemen? Shut up. <laughs> uh, the Red-Headed League is currently under investigation for a grand deception. A deception of what nature, Council? They've been targeting red-headed men across all of London and tricking them out of small sums of money. Ah, yes. The Red-Headed League taking money from red-headed people, a.k.a. the British government to all of Ireland for centuries. Mm. Wop wop. Mm. Two men were arrested for the misdemeanor only yesterday, in fact. My lord, the defense calls for those two men to be summoned at once. <clears throat> Redheads. In my court? They don't have human rights. No! Not oh, I heavens! Oh. Inspector Gregson clearly infiltrated the Red-Headed League using this hairpiece, so it's very likely that he had direct contact with these criminals. And it's quite possible that such contact led to more serious events. How do you think he got that baby? <laughs> I concur that we can, <laughs> in good conscience, leave this new avenue unexplored. You wouldn't be so confident if I was in the room with you, I can no. you. No, you'd be cringing, actually. You, you, uh, you'd you be sitting up straight. You, you, you would be eyes forward. Well Worst. done, Mr. Naruhodo. I got of... you back, Jello. We can, we can win this. Enough out of you. <laughs> 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 One of the reasons that Yam and I need to hang out in person is so that I can see her death stare so that for the rest of my life, whenever we're apart and I make a joke like that, I immediately go, sorry. And then I don't say anything for another 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's another possible line of inquiry for us at least. Prosecution will make immediate arrangements for the charged men to appear. Bring th these two red-headed Lee conspirators before me, Prosecute Asugi. I don't know where they are. At once, my lord. Very good. We will have a 30 minute recess. Court is adjourned. Inspector Greg Nant. Ex. Inspector Greg Nant. Thank you, Nom Nom Freshman, for, for grabbing these clips. Much appreciated. Yes. Thank you. Oh. <sighs> All right, time oh. to see if my tea has cooled down. I shall go on the monkey bars. Oh, there you are, Odo! What kept you, my dear fellow? Hello, Mr. Sholmes. Gina. You sure about what you said in there? That the boss, you know, actually died the day before. It's pretty odd to swallow. Yes, uh, I was shocked by the revelation too, Chi. As was I! Possibly more shocked than the both of you! Oh, get in line, you it's fucking twat! It's not a competition, Mr. Sholmes, but I was more shocked than all of you put together. <laughs> this is the- I smack you! This is the autopsy report in question, is it? Yes. It's strange that there's no time of death noted. I suppose there's a simple explanation. <gasps> or perhaps it was a deliberate omission. No death note. Oh dear. If it was deliberate, it puts me in mind of the last case we worked on in Dr. Scythe. I know. Anyway, it seems that on the day before Lord Van Zeeks discovered his body, Inspector Gregson was investigating the Red-Headed League, so perhaps something happened with them. Come to think of it, you had trouble with those League men too, didn't you, Mr. Sholmes? You were taken in by their trick. No, no, no. Naturally, I wasn't taken in, as you put it. My sleuth hound interest was merely piqued slightly by the rare scent of a weekly four pound income. And that scent masked the underlying scent of deception, I suppose. The two criminals in question are the pair we saw being arrested yesterday, aren't they? In Mr. Yo Mr. Sholmes' suite, I mean. That's right, Suze! And it was me who took him in! Thanks to a tip off by a good law abiding citizen. Indeed, yours truly. So it's going to be that pair of witnesses in the stand next, is it? Something doesn't quite make sense to me, though. The day before Inspector Gregson was found, you hadn't had trouble with the Red-Headed League yet, had you? Why would the Inspector have been investigating them? Well, the likely explanation would be that Gregson's own sleuth-hound interest was piqued by the rare scent of a weekly four-pound income. 
Ah, four pounds, an innocuous sum in and of itself. <laughs> I mean, his family was going to get bigger. He probably needed some more money. No time with the same brush as you, Sholmes. <laughs> yes, that's you. Hold <laughs> on, what? Yes, well, then there's the whole issue of Inspector Gregson being investigated by Lord Van Zeeks for some reason. The Reaper, the Red-Headed League, Inspector Gregson, Lord Van Zeeks. You're getting so good with your proper nouns. Oh, thank you. And the Red-Headed League and Kazuma. <laughs> I feel as though he knew we'd arrive at this point somehow. Gosh, I think you're right. What's he really trying to achieve here today? All the answers will soon be revealed. Observe the time, my dear fellow. The recess will be over very shortly. Yes, you're right. I'm going to make spaghetti tonight and I'm excited. Cosimo oh. was determined that he should be the one to prosecute this trial. And he was determined that I should take the defense. Just what is it that he's hoping to make me see, I wonder? I get the feeling we're a long way from the end of this trial yet. Wow, a rare, we are not even close to the final testimony. <laughs> <laughs> that means it's the final testimony. You ready mm. then, Miss Suzato? Mm. Yes, I am ready to walk in there and it to be all over very quickly. The I died. <laughs> the killer no! is, the killer no! is baby Greg. No! The kicks his dead body. The killer is baby Gregson. He just popped out, shot his dad, and escaped through the chimney. <laughs> Ooh, look at me, standing like a bitch. <laughs> so nice you mean standing me. normally? Be nice to me. <laughs> We're resuming the court. Go. <laughs> now then, Prosecutor Asugi. My lord. Have you summoned the witnesses as requested? Oh, I knew no. I had to do something during that recess. Yes, the two members of the Red-Headed League who planned and carried out the deception. They arrived not long ago from the local prison by police carriage. Very good. Bailiff, usher the two men into the courtroom. Oh, I'm gonna have pasta now! <laughs> These two men are currently being held by the police on suspicion of attempted extortion. You may omit your occupations, but state your names now for the court. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I am Fabian Dusso. <laughs> a descendant of the great de Rousseau family from Nice en France. And my name is Pepino de Rossi. The two men first became acquainted at a boarding school for European nobility. Those who graduate from Temisca are the future leaders of Europe. But do you have any idea how boring it is to be born with noble blood? Hello. Oh shit, sorry. I uh <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I may I make it my mission to get the better of the world by employing the little gray cells of my brain. That is all I am trying to do, huh? So that's the only reason for this whole grand deception you've been carrying out? That's very <laughs> funny. <laughs> you could say that. Not bad, eh? He has the grand ideas, but the petty plans. This strange combination is the charm of the hilarious brother! <laughs> I think we have to work on that a little bit more. <laughs> oingo, boingo, bravo! John <laughs> Lennon! See, couple? <laughs> Listen to me, Peppino. I have two things to say to you. Eh, Are you about to tell me one of your grandi anecdotes? Evivia! Firstly, I want you to stop calling me this couple. <laughs> Drake and Josh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never thought I, life would be <laughs> so simple, but... <laughs> And secondly, we are not the hilarious brothers. This is serious business. Shebeo! 
that is for, forgive me. I keep I keep having to play Italians in this duology. There it is, the couple's trump card, the furrowed brow. It is deep, a uh, couple, the furrow, and the meaning of your words. The court has been led to believe that under the banner of the red-headed league. You have conspired to swindle money from unsuspecting members of the public, is that true? Eh, uh, Peppino, where is the body of Christ? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of me? Oui, c'est ça. I crucify him against the breadsticks! <laughs> 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 What exactly is the nature of this deception by which you plan to defraud? We kill Jesus and turn him into spaghetti! <laughs> Why do you take us a man? We put the roses on his head! We drag him up the hill! Why do you think they call it angel's hair? <laughs> I love hanging out with you guys! You're the Olive Garden of Eden! <laughs> 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 you can't just come. You can't just follow that up with a hee hee hee. <laughs> 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 oh my god. We'll give you a minute. Oh man, that really got you. I'll oh, we'll continuously it. stab you like Julius Caesar over and over until you stop making sound. Oh I won't man. do what you do to me. Will Will got the deep jello laugh, the one where you <laughs> reveal my lungs. <laughs> I, you reveal there, the frogs inside your chest. There is nothing that makes me happier than getting the big laugh from people. Like Aram, Aram has a rare one I get every once in a while, and it's yeah, it's it's my absolute favorite. You you know whose I value really highly is Piff's. Yes, yes. Oh, Piff's yeah. is a hard one to get. Piff's is rare. Oh my god, Piff's is so good. <laughs> Hello, I will explain it. <laughs> no couple. Leave it to me! Alright! As you see, we both have the vivid red hair, no? At school, we were teased for this without pity. Oh. The, cap the couple here, he was many times behind the schoolhouse crying like the Trevi Fountain. Oh no! Where is those dogs? One day the world we will speak those red heads! Every night he would be. Sapien <laughs> Pepino, enough! I will explain the rest. <laughs> The first step was the newspaper advertisement. About one week before the plan was put into operation, we listed the same notice in every paper in London. Really, really quick, I want to see how old these two are supposed to in be. In chat, apparently Pepino is 25. <laughs> Bull no. Bullshit! Oh my god! <laughs> how, how old is, um... 26. I'm in love with this guy. This is... This is like... Like, I would hire someone and be like, I need to make the most Civ character I can. Can you draw them? <laughs> I... I swoon. <laughs> All right. I already read that. Yes, we saw that notice. It was this one, I believe, entitled, To the Red-Headed League. <laughs> oui, César. I am honored that you have seen it. It states that the only condition for joining the League is having flame-colored hair. And that if you satisfy the interview panel and are ambitious to the league, you could receive a weekly income of four pounds. On the date specified, redheaded redheaded mm. hopefuls gathered in droves at a park specified in the advertisement. And from each person present, this pair took an application fee of five shillings. Kind of a hilarious scam, honestly. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And with the money to France, it was a plan most elegant, no? No, it was most dishonorable. I will fuck you. But to be frank, I'm stunned anybody was foolish enough to be taken in by such an obvious trick. <clears throat> One second. <clears throat> <Hit him. clears throat> <clears throat> the park was described by one witness as choked with red hair. Oh, sorry, let me try this again. Choked with <clears throat> red headed folk like a Costa's orange barrow. And the day on which all these men gathered to apply was the day before the victim was discovered. Crucially, these two men spoke face to face with every single person present that day. We, oui, 
I have seen more red-headed people in one day than I will see in the rest of my life. I don't want to be a chicken, I don't want to be a duck, so I shake <laughs> my <laughs> butt, <laughs> cluck, cluck, cluck. <laughs> Sissy, and now every time I see the couple's hair, I feel sick to my stomach. Or maybe that's the 25 pounds of a Jesus I've been eating. <laughs> Anyway, why have we been summoned here today? <laughs> Sorry? The date for our trial was not until tomorrow, I was told. Have you ever had a stuffed Christ pizza? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Naturally, neither of these men have been told have any details about this. Have you ever had a stuffed this... Christ pizza? <laughs> Surprising <laughs> amount of mileage to be found from this joke. They've only been shown this photograph. Very good. So, Mr. De Rousseau and Mr. De Rossi, you will now give your formal testimony for the court. On the subject of the gentleman pictured in this photograph. Of course, we are always ready to help with the law. We had more than 1,000 reddit people assemble in the park on Lime Street that day. But I don't recall the man in this photograph, eh, couple? I'm just realizing now I am almost giving this guy a French-Canadian accent, which is not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Uh-oh! <laughs> no, I don't remember him. Obviously, he is dead now, but I assure you he was not in the park. Hello, this victim is a nothing to do with us! You have a lot to answer for, Peppino. It is your fault that we got caught in the first place. Oh, yeah? Peppino. The fucking name Peppino the Ritz. Oh, God, that's such a cute name. It's a good name. Peppino you... means cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> You've given sworn testimony that this man in the photograph was not present. Can you be certain? Oui, oui, I am quite certain. We did not even interview this man. Nobody looking like this came to the park. This, I can promise. It's been noted that you have been arrested for a grand deception, however. Accordingly, this court has little confidence in your assurances. Mm. Oof. Oof. <laughs> 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 we decided to get a nowhere, huh? Pepino, no swing! He's really a soul king now. <laughs> This confidential document was obtained directly from Scotland Yard. It records an entry from the inspector's private diary dated the day before the incident. It reads, Lime Street, Red-Headed League, Undercover. Ah, wow, customer, that was an incredible impression. Thank you, I've been learning. <laughs> I have the answer. Maybe I don't, now I am turning French again. <laughs> Maybe there was another similar event in the park on the day in question, huh? That is ridiculous. <laughs> There's no question that Inspector Gregson was investigating the Red-Headed League, which means it's quite possible that's when he was killed. Guilty. Very well. The defense may proceed with the cross-examination now. Uh, yes, my lord. Doesn't. Escuchen el pepino como un leor. Pepino, my lord. Pepino. <laughs> I want to go to this last one. He really one. is doing the Mario jump. That's super cute. What do you mean by that? Cavolo, you promised not to say, eh, couple? After we had taken all the money that day, we should have left the country. That was my plan. I left the Pacha single the tickets for the ferry to Dunker to my companion here. But they bought them for the wrong day! Oops. <laughs> See, but it's an easy to, uh, it's an easy mistake to make, huh? The, the first, the thirty-first. Boh! I have no sympathy for you. See if a tummy hurt. <laughs> oh, my tummy hurts, but I am being very brave. <laughs> <laughs> we were an all day late for the boat because of your stupidity. And it's only because of this that the so-called great red the detective caught us. I stabbed Christ with this fork. <laughs> <laughs> it is the fork of Longinus. A couple, you know what I think? This is the work of God. It's a holy punishment. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we kill his son! <laughs> Killing the son of God! We work our way through the Holy Trinity, are we color 
Oh, dia dah red or white dan negeri. How does this keep happening? <laughs> Because we're amazingly accurate <laughs> at coming up with bits. <laughs> no. For the last time, this is not only punishment. This is only your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame God for your unholy mistakes. This is a good. Does anyone want to screen cap this? This is a good reaction. I think this was the screen cap you sent me like weeks and weeks ago of them. Hold on, I will do it again though. This is so fucking funny. I love these two. <laughs> yeah. You'll prophesize your bits. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You are making me sick with anger. <laughs> Maybe I make a mistake, but when it's time to eat the pasta, no one is a pasta. And I've seen the evidence. <laughs> They haven't told us much we didn't already know. What do you think, Mr. Naruhodo? <laughs> well, if it was in the inspector's diary, it seems likely he must have gone to Lime Street that day. And yet these two both claim they didn't see him. Say, they don't appear to be telling. I oh, look how happy he is. Go, go, go. Well, they are experts in deception. Don't forget, sounding plausible is their specialty. They may be lying simply to avoid being implicated in this case as well. In chat, Gregson passed away. <laughs> Surely, if they were truly experts in deception, they wouldn't have been caught. Well, yes, you do have a point there. Seems to me we need more information. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Hold it. Exciting. Oh man, I wish I had a little chain for my glasses. A thousand people. That's a very big crowd. It was quite a spectacle. <laughs> We're dead that come from all over the capital. See, the couple here, he has the magnetismo animalia. Nobody else could attract so many people. If I could be born again, I would be the couple. Oh. <laughs> All those people want it with the money, Papino. The four pounds per week. Are you suggesting that you spoke personally with all 1,000 applicants? Mm -hmm. Oui, oui, that we did, because every one of them paid us five shillings. We take their names, and we take their money, and we take their addresses as well. Then I t oh, I bet I bet we're gonna find the address oh, of uh, mm -hmm. the. Of you, Boone? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. And then I tell them we take a summer days to let them know by a post. Infinito. Maybe two minutes a person. We start early in the morning. We stop late in the night. So you earned five thousand shillings in one day. That's a small fortune. If honestly, if you pull this bullshit off, you get that money. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah. get your money. Yeah, you earned that. Who'd have thought there were a thousand such gullible redheads in London to start with? One of whom was a great detective with chemically altered hair. They were, th uh, but I don't recall this man in the photograph. He. D it reminds me of that one story of um. There was some, I want to say it was like a London zoo or something, or like it was some I, kind of museum yep. and someone like this, they were like, oh yeah, we got this employee. He's been working here for like 35 years and he, mm. uh, he takes like, it was either like two or five pounds to park or something like that. Cause yep. you know, it's an inner city. And then one day he disappeared and they were like, we can't find him. They were like, they were like trying to look up his records. They're like, no one ever hired that guy. He just showed up and took people's money for like 30 years and then fucked so off. Funny. And like, sure. you get it. If you, if you do that, you get that money. And, and like, really? Yeah, sure, it's like sneaky sneaky, but he he didn't like rob people. He took three bucks. Yeah. You he know? Do he doesn't look at all familiar. No, I don't think so. And this is a wig, eh? He was trying to trick us. I don't know like the people who are trying to trick the other people! A drink! Says the con artist. <laughs> If between them they interviewed a thousand people with red hair, it would be unreasonable to expect them to remember every face. No, no, signore. I may be small, but my memory is very big. I'm a little guy. I want to be a chicken. I don't want to be a duck. 
he, he loves this song. He does. He sings it every day. <laughs> I never forget the thing. These two look like the kind of con men who would like set up a fake organ grinder monkey show, and oh this my God. guy would dress up as a monkey. <laughs> In my opinion. In chat, pointing to Red Mole, Apollo's gift of prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> in my opinion, I do not think this man was in the park. But he's not going to give the court a definite, it seems. Hey, couple, you don't see a man like this, huh? I'm a little guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little guy. But according to what you said, you spoke with a thousand or more people that day. Oui, that's true. My eyes were burning by the end of the day. Surely then you can't remember, uh, you can't actually remember every single face. How are you so certain that this particular man wasn't present? Normally the red hair is very distinctive, eh? But not when you have 1,000 redheads crowding around. Then it's just an eyesore. But if there was some other information you could give us, uh, then maybe we could uh, recall maybe uh, five dollars. <laughs> That is not the line, Pepino. Remember, we do not remember him. We are sure of that fact, huh? <laughs> if there was a man with red hair piece, but his mustache did not match the color, then I do not think we could have forgotten him. But that's and what... then you have the opposite case, where people have like, like brown or like salt and pepper hair, and then they have red beards. That's always interesting. That's, yeah, a, that's a weird genetic thing. No no pun intended. I'm always a little wigged out by people whose facial hair doesn't match their their head hair. Cosima said Genetics these, are weird, man. Cosima said these two had only been shown that photograph and they'd been told nothing else at all. But what if I fed them just one other detail about the victim, perhaps? Uh... Fish and chip? <laughs> <laughs> Did that... you know? <laughs> His profession wouldn't help. His name, they said they got the list of names. That's so, true. That's Do the true. fish and chips, it'll be funny. Uh, but, yeah, that's, they fed him more information. Okay. Fish and fish. <laughs> I can certainly appreciate that just knowing the man had red hair wouldn't help you remember in this situation. But what if I told you that the man was always munching on a packet of fish and chips? Do you remember a man who was eating incessantly? Perhaps eating for two? <laughs> Not really. I was lonely looking at the heads of the applicants. I wouldn't have noticed the fish and chips any more than the caviar and smoked salmon. Oh, spaghetti! Me, I love the spaghetti! We know, Peppino, we know. Really, I had no idea. Tell them again what you said before, Peppino. See, couple, see, I say it again and again. I, I eat Christ! Well, I guess it's the name. <laughs> yeah. Wait, hang on. Woohoo! Yeah! Yeah. Yeah. Woohoo! I love these two. Yeah. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I can certainly appreciate that just knowing the man had red hair wouldn't help you remember the situation. But what if I told you the man's name was Gregson? Uh, the man in the photograph is a Monsieur Gregson. They could also be going for the occupation because we could be trying to bait them into being like, oh yeah, mm. we remember Mr. Holmes, the undercover detective. And be like, so you can remember one specific person. Yeah. Yes? Names, they are boring. I d Me? I did not <laughs> listen to any of them. Oh. He was not a real interview, huh? It was just a for show. Why would I remember the names? That's right, this changes nothing. The man in the photograph was not there, as we have already said. I see. All right, yeah. Tell them your funny little line, Peppino. <laughs> Woohoo! There it is, the little wahoo. I love it. So you press good. me again? You press me it? <laughs> you press me? You keep asking me the same question? <laughs> Jail! Jail for Peppino! One thousand years! I can certainly appreciate that just knowing the man had red hair wouldn't help you remember this situation. But what if I told you that the man in the red hair piece was actually a detective? The man in the photograph? A detective? Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, that was Kazuma. 
It will appear he found your nose in the paper. Suspectors started to investigate incognito. It's a good note. Do you want another finger? Yeah. Wait, what? I'll take one. Sorry, but this change is nothing. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, that was like a real excuse me. <laughs> Something to add, Mr. Derosi? Okay. <laughs> Sir, I am always adding something. Parmesan, olive oil, pepper. Pepper, I am French again. What I mean is, did you not agree with your friend's last remark by any chance? Uh, what, uh, what did he just say? About the detective? Yes, that. Keep your mouth shut, Pepino. I have said enough already. But why, couple? What is the problem? Just a little guy. <laughs> there is a man who said, uh, Oh, I am an inspector from Scotland Yard! What? The boat! Probably... The little box! <laughs> Probably yeah. Sholm's lying. Mm-hmm. Order! Order! Explain this vault face in your testimony, witness! It's simple. A man who was... There was no such man. Ma... Ma die. What are you saying, couple? Have you forgotten, eh? I have forgotten nothing. Nobody likes this game to the park. Bastard couple, bastard, bastard couple. You beat <laughs> me! And many things! But not two, the memory and the meals. Like I said, when it's time to eat the pasta, no one is a pasta! <laughs> but you are inferior to me in every other way. So shut up! So stop slamming your hands! God! <laughs> to tell the magistrate. Need it is, sir. Uh... Oh, yeah, there was a man who came to the park. He said he was an inspector from Scotland Yard. However, he looked nothing like the man in the photograph. He was someone else. How can you be so sure? Because to start with, his face was completely different. See, it's true, it's true. The man who came was a younger. His face was a clean shaven. His eyes were sadder. Sadder than Gregson's? His chin was thinner. No resemblance whatsoever, then. Anyway, I was not going to be fooled. I took the obvious precaution and said to him, If you are really detective, so show us the proof. See, see, the couple here, he doesn't take a no nonsense, eh? But he was well prepared. He said he had identification. Identification? Uh, you mean official police inspector's identification? Identification? Oh. You mean identification? Maybe this is why Gre <laughs> Gregson was going to France, I just realized. Mm. Because they that were going is... to escape to France. Mm. That is most unconvincing. Sorry, my lord. Council, no incognito inspector would offer his identification for inspection. It's quite out of the question. Definitely. Why would he expose his true identity? Clearly the papers were fake. Certo capo, you are a genius! As we say in Italia, it takes a thief to recognize another, eh? I just realized who it is. <laughs> and what happened after he announced that he was a te detective? <laughs> It became very annoying. He said, you are under investigation. <laughs> so I took his papers from him and chased him out of the park. It was fantastical. And look, here is identification. So you stole it from the man. He had it coming. He made us very scared. <laughs> <laughs> but he was not who he said he was. His little side face there is so funny. Indeed, the person described does not appear to have behaved as a true inspector would. However, I believe it would be prudent for these identification papers to be entered into evidence. Hmm, but I like them. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. <clears throat> Let's take a peeky poo. What do we have? Yeah? Okay, fine. Yeah, some fucking Resident Evil bullshit. Suzato, hold it for me! I need to open the flap! <laughs> well, I suppose we should see what this inspector's identification looks like inside. The anticipation is killing me! Yes, definitely looks fake, doesn't it? Out of interest, what name is given? <laughs> Probably just something plucked out of the air. It's Tobias Gregson. Wait, what? 
Huh? This uh, Scotland Yard insignia looks genuine to me. But how? Why did it skip? And something. Yeah, I can't use history right now. Since but when I... have you known those? Do, do you mean to say? I know it seems incredible, but yes, I think this is a genuine identification book issued by Scotland Yard. Shom stole it from him. <laughs> but mm. that's. That's unbelievable! This is the real thing after all! I'm gonna BRB super quick. I'm a little guy! I'm a little guy! I'm a little guy! What a man! What a man! What a man! What a mighty good man! <laughs> Just a little guy. Just a little I guy. I can't reach the counter. Objection. <laughs> I wonder if I could ask you to examine the uh, this identification book very closely. Miss Lestrade. Why Miss Lestrade? But what is your intention here, Council? Is this really a fake? Or is it genuine? That's the question, which we can't enter ourselves. Don't be ridiculous. No Scotland Yard detective would allow his or her identification to be stolen. Hey. Unless he was dead. That, that, that is the bosses. No question about it. It can't be. As I suspected. The undercover detective who the undercover detective who attended the Redheaded League's enrollment on the day in question was the real Inspector Gregson, carrying out an incognito investigation. Z Z hello! Order! Order! But if the boss had his identification stolen, he would have reported it straight away. I mean, he was always on me about it. If you lose something, report it at once, he'd say. Could oh it, boy. Could it be then that the inspector was physically unable to report it? Physically? Hey, what are you saying? Unable to. You're not suggesting. <gasps> yes, it's quite possible he couldn't make the walk due to his third trimester. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I felt it. I, felt I could it hear really. you chuckle at it. I knew it was coming. Could it, like, oh. it was quite possible that he was killed before he had the chance to report his identification stolen. No. His water broke. Water. The defense posits that the victim was killed the day before his body was discovered at a different location. Do you two have anything to say about that? No! <laughs> I know nothing! <laughs> I know nothing! <laughs> Pull yourself together, Pepino. Mon dieu, you can't behave a little more like a master criminal than that, no? <laughs> that way we should have done the entire <laughs> Stop crying, Pepino. Please, otherwise I'll... <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing! <laughs> <laughs> but you will tell everything or face the worst possible outcome. <laughs> you will dry your eyes and testify again about these identification papers as the priest's circumstances under which they came by them. <laughs> For crying out loud, Yare, yeah. Yare, Daze. <laughs> I love these two. They're fucking ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, these two are great. The truth is we took him prisoner, kept him for the night, and our secret I don't. Oh, what? Even well, though I didn't this see escalated. He was a detective. I, I was too scared to let him go that day, just in case. <laughs> Holy fuck, we did something really fucked up, Pepino! I did not know he was pregnant! We took some <laughs> and <then, laughs> we... Pepino, we kidnapped two people! <laughs> <laughs> we kidnapped this person and are legally able to use the, the carpool lane on the highway! <laughs> I had promised we would release him three days later! I promise! <laughs> <laughs> and then 
my se- God! Ever since I eat the, the cheeses, all of the water that comes out of my eyes turns into wine! Oh, so precious, me know! <laughs> we took it the most and then the vacation from him and shot him in the room next to ours. There might have been a little tussle, but we did him no harm. You see, next morning, we let him go. He spent the night in a nice room. It was a nothing like a prison. <laughs> Holy fuck, these guys suck. I love them. <laughs> this, this is outrageous. You imprisoned the man. But no, see, no, it, it was not like a prison. He was a very comfortable and very calm and happy. Hi, couple. It, it was never part of my plan. I swear it. Oh, so, so now you think it was my oh, fault? His little eh? face. <laughs> Just because I got the date for the very wrong by one little day. I do not think it was your fault, Peppy. No, I know it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Per favore, capo. It's not fair. So have plenty of time for squabbling back at the prison, gentlemen. <laughs> I don't believe this. <laughs> Could he have been a real detective? Oh. As for the defense, proceed with the cross-examination. And so, oh, so, on the day before the incident, Craigson spent the night confined in this pair's hideout. Wow, that took a turn I was not prepared <laughs> for. Shit, that's yeah, that, so funny. that was a lot of information we got for not a very big press. I um, kept him Gregson. for the night in a secret hideout. I didn't think it was real. I'm too scared to let him go. Hold it! Do, do you realize what you're saying? You have to believe me. I never intended for that to happen. And I'm sure the detective did not intend it either. Do you think? But... Um, but there was nothing else I could do. See? Nothing else? That was the first crime for the couple. He was there at the end of his wits. I have told you before, Pepino, that is not a way to describe a criminal mess their mind. What about this hideout of yours? An old empty house behind the park on Lime Street. We went to the place for two days. It was ins- an inspired idea by the couple here. I was going to stay outside on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> The wild idea. the dogs would come and keep me warm at night. <laughs> no, 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 not impulsive, inspired, eh, Kabu? Oh, what am I supposed to say to that, eh, Pepino? <laughs> you give me a little kiss and a pat on Pepino's head. <laughs> okay, just, just un petit, un petit. Un petit. Un petit. I will pat your head. Oh, Pepino, you've killed him! <laughs> You pat him once, little, he pops up in the air and then falls beneath the earth a little 100 points. Yeah. And it was in the house described that you can find Inspector Gregson, was it? Ugh, we. But you have to remember, I was under the impression that he was a pretender, not a real inspector. That doesn't quite add up, though. If you didn't think the man was a real inspector, there would be no reason to take him prisoner, would there? No, you are right, but we couldn't be completely certain. Hold it! Too scared? Why? Because! Oh, why had he come to the park? We didn't know! And there was a chance that he had seen through my plan. And if that was the case, he would go straight to the police station and blow us a whistle on us! But. If he was just a fan into being an inspector, he was up to no good, huh? without a doubt! I think most people would agree that it's you two who are up to no good. Well, uh, see, you may be right, a uh, eh, couple. The point is, we were not able to escape from England immediately. That is why we had no choice but to take him on prisoner. What I don't understand is why the inspector felt the need to show you his identification in the first place. See, I asked myself the same question. We were writing down the names and it is me and the dresses of all. I still think they got not Greg's. <laughs> uh, and no, the they they got uh, they got Evie's husband. 
Oh, right? you're yeah. right. Yeah. And the yeah. dresses of all the people who we took five shillings from that day. I have forgotten what the name he said, uh, but the address, it startled me. See, si, see, si, address, Scotland Yard Homicide Division, he said. What? He probably didn't like your face, Pepino. Oh, who wouldn't like who this wouldn't? face? Yeah, okay, so that's it. Um, fucking, what was the husband's name? Uh, Daly. Uh, yeah. so he, assuming he got fired from being the, uh, the guard or whatever at the place, Strongheart probably, like, took him and was like, Hey, you want to work for me as a secret secret cop or something awful? I would love uh, to imagine that that uh, daily formed the exact same scam and there is a huh. redheaded league and these guys came and muscled in on his territory without realizing it. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, I was not rude. I just politely asked him why he had said it. And that's when he started to say he was an inspector. Not long afterwards, he took out his identification. What was Inspector Gregson playing at? Tell the court what happened next. You took him back to your hideout, you say? See, we did. We did. We were a little baby. Hold it. That being this identification book here, correct? See, that is the one. Why did you believe that it was a forgery? I never seen a real one, of course. But he was so suspicious, this man. Hello, I was thinking he must be false, so I can't. We, oui, it is just as Pepino has said, we were convinced it was not genuine. And so together, the hilarious brothers, we took the man captive. All we did was shove him inside a locked room. Then we made the preparations to transport all of the money. In for a penny, in for a pound. That would also explain why Daly was missing for a night. Yup. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you mean by a little tussle, exactly? Hmm? Boh, it was nothing. Just a minor accident. Hmm, boh. Can, can you elaborate? Boh are these are nuts! <laughs> <laughs> the full saw inspector, he was a real piece of the work, eh, Kaku? What happened? Oof, it was a disaster. We give him a nice room, and what does he do, huh? In the middle of the night, he tries to escape through the Vendalore! Can you blame him? We chased him, bien sûr, and we got him again. Can you blame us? Wait, you you didn't shoot the man in your haste, did you? So, who do you think we are? Of course not! I shot him! I no, killed I him! We got hold of him again mm. and took him back to the room! Mm, I wanted seconds after Jesus, what do you think I mean? <laughs> Excuse me. Mr. DeRossi, is something wrong? Ah, uh, me? Something Mr. DeRusso just said seemed to make you, um, it seemed to make you act even more strangely than usual. Uh, what was that all about? Cavallo, at times like that, you don't want to have the couple after you believe me! And I speak from a personal experience! Personal experience? That is enough, Pepino. There is no need to say more! The truth is... I just realized this guy has the exact bangs of Trixie Ruff. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, the night before we pull into the redhead... Uh, we put the le... Fuck! The night before we fuck, we put the redhead <laughs> plan into action and was scared! It was not fair to the couple, but I tried to run away. It's a shame you didn't manage it. But the couple here, he come after me like a turbine, huh? And he dragged me back to the house, kicking and screaming. I still have the bruises to prove it, eh, couple? Oh. The bruises, you say? Just like on your avatar, and <laughs> Shut <laughs> up! Uh, oh no, is that why ah, he was he's wearing oh, makeup? This, oh, the other guy. Oh, it's the, the same mark as, yeah, the, the same mark as the gossip guy. Oh, yeah. interesting. Hey, you wanna see ya? Uh? You wanna see my fantastic bruises? That's enough now, Pepino. No one wants to look at any part of you. <laughs> we don't talk about bruises. Oh no. Yeah. What? 
What did you do? I assure you or you don't. I assure you or you don't. You do now. Hello. If everybody wants to see, then I do it. Echo the dolphin. You see? <laughs> He's still very visible, eh? That red ring around your neck? You got that when you were dragged to the house? See? It means my Xbox are broke. I said that's enough! Pepino's neck is nothing to do with what we are talking about here, yeah, you have my word. Hmm, yes. What is your opinion, Council? About this red ring around Mr. Daroki's neck? It's obviously fucking important. <laughs> Mr. Darosi, I'm going to have to ask you to amend your testimony with the details about that mark on your neck. A couple, you see? Everyone Somebody's is... right, ring around DeRossi, that's very funny. Oh my uh, god! <laughs> god! That's very clever, honestly. You see, everyone is interested in what I say. <laughs> very well, you amend your testimony, do it! Sissy, if you really wanna know. Before he choke me out, I sounded like this. <laughs> <laughs> A collar on it. God! You just uh, broke my neck with that joke! <laughs> yeah, the same thing happened to him. <laughs> uh, are you saying that that red, the speckled band? Sissy, no. a big collar made from the leather! Why do you have that? Don't ask questions. <laughs> Is this true, Mr. DeRusso? Oh, what? We had this Saint Bernard at home when I was younger. <laughs> it is a souvenir from the time. It's a very strong chain. Yo, you know when you have a pet and then you carry around their leash for the rest of your life? Yeah, li like a normal person, right? A strong chain? And you put that around your friend's neck? I'm sorry, I was so angry as that he was leaving me alone. You did not have to tie the chain to the leg of the <laughs> I'm what trying- the fuck? I'm trying so hard to let this slide. <laughs> Bro, the, the turns in this case. Bro, these, these guys two. are fucked up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I would not Yikes. try to run again. You you didn't do that to Inspector Gregson as well, did you? Three to the people equal is the couple's mother. <laughs> it's starting to sound a lot more like a prison all of a sudden. Is that what it's starting to sound? The couple is tough, but the couple is rough. <laughs> I shouldn't have done it. So, the following morning, when you release the inspector... He had the red ring around his neck, just like me. Pepino, s'il vous plaît, leave it now. Now you know, huh? The couple here, you don't want to tango with him, huh? But for the inspector, he's not so bad. Okay. How do we do that? <sighs> um... Uh, I'm getting... Okay, Can you on. present people? Okay, um, I would not have thought to do this, so I'm glad I just looked it up. This this feels like a bit of a stretch. I would never have done this. Objection. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I guess. It's weird, because in, like, I think exactly one or two games you can present people. Mm-hmm. And I honestly kind of wish you could in most games, because a lot of the time it is about pointing at a person and it's kind of awkward. They've mostly solved that by just having it be like, whoa, who could you be talking about? And then you can only pick people, but I don't know. So the day before his body was discovered, Inspector Gregson was taken prisoner while working incognito. No, no, it was not like that. It was hardly a prison. It was uh, an invitation to stay. It was only. However you describe it, there's one glaring inconsistency that remains. What inconsistency is this, Council? I would ask the court to look closely at this photograph, inexplicably a coloured one, of the victim, Inspector Gregson. Mon Dieu, that is so beautiful! <laughs> Jesus. You will see that there is no red ring visible around his neck. He can play Halo as much as he likes. Eh, hey, but that oh. makes no sense. Halo is a ring. It was me who took the color of the man in the morning. And I saw the red bruises on his neck, just like I have. Given the mark is still clearly visible on this witness's neck, 
We'd expect to see the bruising on the victim, who was put into the collar more, uh, more recently than Mr. DeRossi. Indeed. That is most peculiar. But what do we tell you, huh? Huh? We say this from the beginning. <laughs> I'm free! <laughs> <laughs> Pepino is right, the man in the photograph. <laughs> the goddess, she always says she's gonna slug me. <laughs> but we never expected it to happen like this. <laughs> he is someone different to the man we held captive that night. Order! Order! It would appear then that on the day before the incident, the man who visited the park on Lime Street posing as an incognito inspector was not Objection. Inspector Gregson at all. Objection. If that's true, however, how do you explain the inspector's identification? Ah. This is a genuine identification book issued by Scotland Yard. It's inconceivable that someone could have stolen such an important item from the inspector. The prosecution made that assertion itself. Oh, you, fuck. You suck at this. And nice. we also know that the boys. Yes, ma'am. She's not a smash. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and we also know that the inspector had made a note about the red-headed league in his diary for that day, which surely means we can't divorce the two defense completely. The inconsistency noted by the defense is most troubling. If it were the real Inspector Gregson whom these two red-headed gentlemen encountered, the fact that no bruising can be seen around his neck defies explanation. But equally, if they actually encountered an imposter, how did that person come to be in possession of the real inspector's identification? Does the defense have some plausible explanation, counsel? The whole thing defies explanation. It is for precisely these occasions that we keep meticulous notes in the court record, Mr. Naruhodo. Because those are the facts, and the facts cannot lie. No, the facts can't lie. Even when they point to something so incredible, it's almost unbelievable. Well, my lord, the true identity of the person who turned up in the park for the Red-Headed League's enrollment... Wait, hang on. Enrollment with one L? I've never seen it spelled that way. Hmm. Oh. Enrollment. Enrollment is revealed by the information in the court record, I believe. Good gracious. Very tantalizing, Mr. Naruhodo. If I had a nickel for every time you said that to me. How dare you right now? So why don't you help us all see whatever truth it is you've apparently seen? Who exactly was this inspector that appeared before Mr. DeRosso and DeRossi? Though it seems incredible, I admit, the undeniable facts point to only one thing. Since no bruising can be seen on the victim's neck, the person who these two red-headed men took prisoner that day cannot have been Inspector Gregson. In other words, your whole argument up to now has been a waste of time. Objection! Hey. Be nice to me. On the contrary, I haven't finished. <laughs> what? What's wrong, Siv? Yeah, Siv. Say the line, John. <laughs> There's no bruising on the victim's neck, so the question immediately posed next is, who exactly was this man in the park on Lime Street? Lime Street? Found to be carrying <laughs> Inspector Gregson's identification. See, see, that's right. We tell the same story every time. Whoever this man was, the couple dragging him from a pillar to a post with the dog Calare. Mon dieu, Pepino. I was not so harsh as you say, huh? So who was that false inspector, huh? Who was he? Clearly, the defense has an idea about that. No, I think we should throw in some more dialogue before you let me pick. About the true identity of the man these two imprisoned that night. I too think we should throw in more dialogue. Must ask the counsel for the defense to elaborate post haste. Who was it? Sorry, Suzato. <laughs> <laughs> I like weird shit. Yeah, he's got the same weird curls. Hang on. Hang on. Goodness me. Isn't that... One of the witnesses who was in the stand in this very courtroom earlier today. A nameless man, whose only Hang occupation on. appears to be peddling hearsay to ha passers-by. <laughs> 
What on earth would a street seller be doing with a police inspector's identification papers? Witnesses, is this the man or not? Oh, what has happened to his lip? Uh, see, this man is not for the Red Headed League, huh? He's looking for the Twisted Lip League, no? Uh -huh, so perhaps funny, rather than making... <laughs> perhaps rather than making such a rash claim next time, you should bite... You should bite your lip instead. It seems stupid. impossible. This is very stupid, guys. Yes, but one undeniable fact remains. During his testimony earlier, I noted something around the man's neck. A red ring of bruising. Eh? I'm into weird what? shit, I am. The defense demands that Mr. Gossip be brought back to the stand. Order! Order! Bailiff! Bring the aforementioned witness back into the courtroom. Immediately. <clears throat> He's dead. Bro. Well, I never. An undeniable ring of bruising indeed. Identical to that of the witness beside him. Now, oh, what's going on here, eh? I've always had this, me. It's a birthmark, isn't it? A birthmark, you say? I assume the reason you've been recalled to the stand has been explained to you. I am um, something about an inspector again. But I'm telling you, you got it all wrong as usual. You're denying all knowledge of it. Well, of course I am. Are you trying to kill me with all this nonsense, eh? Well, at least you'll have more stories to peddle back on Fresno Street, won't you? Now. We're going to need you to testify again. And you, Mr. DeRosso and Mr. DeRossi, I'm sure you'll cooperate, won't you? Do we have any choice? No. We are in big trouble, my <laughs> couple. He's he is a baby. He's a baby. Why do you dilatory chatter proceed with the testimony? How... Yeah. how much? Alright, I'm gonna... we'll stop here. Cool. Okay. okay. Oh, this this was a silly one. This fucking case. <laughs> Olive Garden of Ethan. Oh my god. Yuck, yuck, yuck. You gotta stop, my voice is running out. Alright. Oh, no. <laughs> well, this has been a very fun case so far. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this one's probably my favorite. Alright. Uh, is anyone going? I think Danny. Danny. Yeah, Danny Danny's been is the playing. Wild. Oh. oh, let's go get her. This is I'm Molly. Sorry. Molly Epithet's voice actress. Go say hi to Danny, and probably freak her out when we give her seven hundred viewers. Good. <laughs> I warn her. No, don't do that. Three, ba, 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 two, ba, ba, one, get her. All right. I had closed. Oh, she had that? ten people. <laughs> How you doing? Whoa! Holy balls! <laughs> Hi! Oh God! <laughs> Hi! <laughs> That's what you meant by incoming. Hello! Hi, everybody! Oh, jeez! Oh, there's so we many. All Garden of <laughs> Hi! Oh my goodness! Hi! <laughs> With 400 people, oh god. A uh, hi! Aww. Hey everybody! <laughs> ho ho holy crap, oh my gosh! She's Great, so Ace cute. Nice, oh we still need to play that. Danny's hi, a everybody. baby. Oh goodness, hi, hi Blue Flames. Oh that's a lot of followers, hold on. <laughs> I, oh jeez. <laughs> oh jeez. Uh, Cun Candy, Jello, thank you for the raid, thank you so much, dude, I hope you're doing good. Uh, <laughs> it's Molly, yes, I voice Molly! <laughs> um, beautiful objection, the password is password striker, but oh, this is a lot of people. <laughs> thank you all so much for the follows. <laughs> Aw, how thank cute. Thank you. Looks all like... Right. If a piece of variation, I will pop out. Uh, yeah. Poop. I'll probably hop into Rat King Farm later. Yeah, Hi. I'm gonna. I Hi. need. I make oh, the spaghetti. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.
Escuché el tepino como un león. Escuché el tepino. Shit is so funny. Pepino Baradí, Pepino Baradí. I like Danny. Yeah, get her new game. You say I need one myself, but I have money. Pepino bailarín. Pepino bailarín. Oh, thank you.